Is it live? Okay, it's live. Welcome to um, another Friday Heather update stream. We got a big update tonight. We got about an hour and 40 minutes of just Heather this week, and then also the eggs. And then also, um, I got what did I get? The screwdriver incident, like the, the police report, BCG uploaded that to their Twitter. So we're going to look at that as well tonight. So that is the agenda for today. Hope you guys are all having an awesome Friday. I uh, hope you guys are ready for the weekend. K Court 96, how are you doing? BCG sent you. BCG is awesome. Your Highness, how you doing? T, we got Daisy Girl up in here. Um, yeah, so we'll just we'll get right into it. Angela. Angela, love to see you. Hope you're doing well, Cheryl. Um, yeah, so I'll uh, let me get this pulled up here. We can just jump right in. Um, okay, I had to split it up into four parts, four parts because my computer's crazy. But we got numbers, we got numbers at the bottom, that's always good. Let's see that. So, if we want to jump back and forth, we can, and it's not going to be insane. Um, so yeah, this is the stories from I think it'd be Saturday or maybe the end of Friday, the because from last week. So, let's just okay. So, I woke up this morning, we were supposed to be up. Let me know if you guys can hear it or not. But 4.30, drama, drama, drama. Um, someone went on my YouTube and enabled comments and made my videos public. I don't know how they could do that. I don't think anyone did that. I think um, maybe YouTube forced her off of YouTube kids mode because she was in made for kids for some reason. And then when you do that, it just automatically turns on the comments. You can turn off comments yourself. But I don't think any of her content is kid friendly or should be classified under made for kids. Those are for court and for my documentation only. Also, I didn't see any new videos get released either. Like, I don't know what she's talking about. The videos I want to be public were public, and the videos I want to allow commenting, they allow commenting. Um, I don't know who would do that. I do want to press charges. I think you did it. That you or Xavier did it and you're just high or something, I forgot. Again, as I've been saying, I don't have all this time in my life to be wasting my daughter was a freshman in high school when this situation began. How did this waste your time? <laughs> what are you going to do with this time? Like, what would you have done at this time? She is a senior in high school now. I have three children. That is four years, count them, that have passed when I have been dealing with all of this fucking drama and abuse. Four, three children, one on the way. That's four kids. You think that I have time to be laying in a tent telling 311 over and over about how I mean, you've been doing it for four years, right? So I think you got a little bit of time to do it. How many times I've been sexually assaulted? I don't. It's not one of my favorite pastimes. I don't enjoy. I mean, by the, the amount that she does it, I'd say it is probably her favorite pastime. This is her. It's just a laundromat shot. I just had a weird dream. Weird dream about Tyler Perry. Uh... Tyler Player was there as Madia, Medea. Uh, so was Megan, Megan still well? I don't know who that is. A girl I went to high school with. Spoiler alert, she doesn't really describe the dream at all. I don't even know what, <laughs> I don't know what this face is about. She's, Heather looks like weird and she looks almost different in every shot. I woke up at two in the morning. And I was having such a weird dream. 26 weeks pregnant. Didn't get to hear anything about the dream, but okay. Good, good job. <laughs> Fucking weird. Scars were like security blankets for the neck. Yeah. I just created this look out of my... Um, Is that a fucking bathroom? Blanket. Oh, it's a blanket. Okay. And a beanie. So just put a blanket over her shoulders and put a beanie on. She created the look, guys. If anyone steals it, that was a Heather Gillespie original. I I gave you guys a wink, but you couldn't see because it was covered by my hair. <laughs> oh, too fast. Look, good thing we got the numbers today. Um, let me find. I can never see this little ball at the bottom. Wow, 146. So we want to be like 145 there i'm just sitting here in my tent waiting for the world to follow 
My plan to fix everything. <laughs> what the fuck? This is what she wrote. Um, I love taking these trips to bring my baby's baskets, even if they don't go as planned. Does that mean you didn't bring your kids fucking anything? You're not supposed to see your kids, Heather. You crazy lady. Uh, I'm grateful for the effort and will continue to make a way. And then that, that's just nothing. I don't know why it was like exclamation point a question mark Xavier. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Shout out to my sponsors. Thank you for not letting me die. And then if you want to donate, please click this link. Uh, when you send your first five dollars, your first five dollars, you receive your first five dollars. Just don't send her anything. It'll, it'll even itself out anyways. You don't need to do that. What the fuck she's talking about? We are working hard to reduce the carbon footprint behind each of these freshly baked breads. Really? Wow. We offset 100% of the electricity we use in our bakeries with renewable energy. And this bread is on sale two for six dollars and they have extra toppings i don't know what that is the extra toppings extra toppings in every bite what are you guys doing today not sitting in a tent eating bread uh i agree with this certain within this within certain limits um special consideration has been given to each situation without impulsive action unless you mistake what appears impulsive but it is actually just someone processing more than they perceive. What the fuck is this? The Prince? The book? Book by a book by somebody. I don't care about that. <laughs> We're gonna move on. Being wrong. So here, I'll record my fuck. Oh, uh, she uploaded a bit of the flowers clip for some reason where she's beating up some flowers. Yourself. I'm the flower, okay? You took me out of my environment where I look like this. And then you fucking slammed me on the fucking ground like this, and I was still okay. So you did it again. And our vision. I don't know what this is either. I just want to go home. Is this recent? Where is this? Uh, it's probably, I had to probably click on this, but I didn't because it's just probably nonsense. She did this whole thing where she like posted a really bunch, a whole bunch of old stuff for her new followers or something. And it's nothing like how she is nowadays. Arthur. And more. Airbnb has not responded to inquiries sent monthly over a year ago for four months in a row, uh, several months each month. The fuck does that sentence mean? Over a year ago for four months in a row, several months each month. Oh, several, several times each month. She's making me fucking die. <laughs> What's happening to my brain? Uh, she's just like, look at all these Airbnbs I stayed at. This could have been you. Let me scam you. Let me scam your Airbnb. I'm Heather Gillespie. Don't you know me? I'm Heather Gillespie, in case you forgot. Day three of the trip to drop off little laundry baskets to my kids with snacks and random seasonal stuff. Walking X, mostly, oh, walking X, mostly pushing the cart. But I have taken it a few blocks as well. I thought she was walking Xavier, like a dog. <laughs> that would have been weird. 26 years pregnant, 26 weeks pregnant. Uh, feeling super sleepy, but I miss my kids so much. I can't wait to see them. You're not going to see them. Every time you go there, you don't see it. Whoops. You don't see them. Please hurry. We have to go. I don't know. I'm not going to go back and read. Anyways, the point is, at the end of the day, um, all my questions remain the same. What's going on here, please? Oh, and I forgot about the when thing. am I going to oh, yes. feel... Listened to, addressed, um, assisted. What's Xavier listening to? He's listening to some old school rap beats or something. I don't know. Or a fancy movie. And restore. That's all. Why aren't you people letting me earn my own income? Is it he's listening to Greece. He's watching Greece? Greece Lightning? Greece Lightning's from Greece, right? I had a friend who was in the musical. And he sang Grease Lightning when he got really high one time. And it was something else. A million remote jobs. 
and what's going on with the person who's shocking Xavier. Now he's going to. Who's shocking Xavier? Who's ever shocking Xavier? That's not good. Don't do that. I have to change his phone number because of you. Leave him alone. Are they shocking him through the phone number? Through his phone? How does that happen? Oh. <laughs> This is how my face looks. And this is how my lines look. <laughs> is this fucking uh, Xavier's favorite movie now? Um, Grease Lightning? We'll call it Grease Lightning Bingo. How about that? That would be good. Imagine. And we just add a little bit of... Mm, mm, mm. See how oh, easy this will button. be. Very good. Very, very good. I feel like I feel like sometimes this isn't real. Like I'm dreaming and I'll wake, I'll be like, whoa, that's crazy. But no, nah, it's just real life. Bend down, O oh Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. That's freaky. Um I was selling renewable energy at one point, but like the PSYOP has gotten so sick and crazy and like rabbit hole like The PSYOP? So this is the first live. Um, it's already interesting. What the fuck are you talking about? That it's like, do we even need that? Is that even a real thing? Sorry, it's just so weird. So um, to tell you guys what's been going on, um, I was in a relationship with someone who I met very briefly before he accepted a plea bargain deal with the state of Illinois um, to be sentenced to 12 years in prison to be served consecutively or congruently or something like that so that he could get out after only four years. She's talking about Dylan or she's talking about Tire Iron Man? Um, I think she's talking about Dylan. Um, I had never dated anyone in the prison system before. I'm not like a weird, you know, criminal or anything like that. Um, he would I'm not a weird criminal. I'm just a normal run of the mill criminal. Okay. Don't get me confused for any weird criminals. Oh my God. All right. I had the bingo guy right. He's just a very charming individual. Some of you may know him from the reality show Love After Lockup. Um, I'm Heather. He's Dylan. Season three. We only came out in like six episodes, but apparently it ruffled a lot of feathers and pissed a lot of people off because I've never been so attacked in my entire life. Just to give you a brief overview, and there's no way I can include everything. Hold on. I thought I heard her vaping for a second while she's pregnant. I was going to be like, no. But she's just eating ice cream. These are always a win for me. Like, my mom used to buy us these when we were sad. My mom didn't really buy us fit, um, fast food. She's a fitness person. Um, she worked at Valley Total Fitness when they were in Chicago and then for, like, many, many years and then switched to export. My sister's a fitness person, and I'm a fitness person. Everyone's really a fitness person. My brother's an athlete. He's played every sport his entire life. Um, I didn't really push my kids too much into it because my mom pushed me to be in every sport there was. I didn't really like any of them to stay full-time in it. Like, I would do, like three months in a sport, like park, park district type of style or intramural type of style. The fuck is she talking about? Um, and I would get so bored. It might be ADHD. Who knows? Either way, I wanted to leave my kids like how I was. Like, I didn't really get into fitness and weightlifting until I was a grown up. When I decided, like, I don't like how this body feels. You know, I had just given birth to my third child. And I was like, I want to move around and chase my children and not weigh, you know, 190 pounds at five foot nine. So I really went hard um, into fitness. Why is she looking off into space while she's saying this story? Like, she, what's happened? And since that time that I made that change to be healthy and I lost a bunch of weight, I feel like I got literally recruited by some, like, dark underworld. And they have been working on me, like Satan and his constituents. What? Satan? Like, wait, wait a second. What is she saying? Why is it over there? She, she says this so nonchalantly. 
That was almost a sentence. It was a grown up when I decided, like, I don't like how this body feels. You know, I had just given birth to my third child and I was like, I want to move around and chase my children and not weigh, you know, 190 pounds at five foot nine. So I really went hard um, into fitness. I went back 30 seconds. This is a long 30 seconds. Sorry, guys. And since that time that I made that change to be healthy and I lost a bunch of weight, I feel like I got literally recruited by some like dark underworld. The dark underworld recruited her. Her filter is going fucking nuts too. I forgot. I, I don't know. I just forget about it. So when she got thin, she got recruited by the dark underworld. And they have been working on me like satan and his constituents satan and his constituents do you guys see the filter <laughs> why is it over there yeah why are you sitting over there because he doesn't want to be on camera come on anyways um so the point is since he was released from prison, now you have to understand, I was the stable one. I was the, the victim in the situation. Love After Lockup makes a deal with him behind my back, runs a false narrative to save him, I guess, and get him out of trouble. Turn the filter off. Like, she went 25 minutes like this? And to continue using him in these, like, deals with the devil. I really don't know all the details. But reluctantly, I agree to do these few episodes of the reality show, and my life has been, like, a real live, like, smear campaign ever since. Um, when I go live without sunglasses on, they'll remove my eyelashes. And Your real eyelashes? How does that happen? Say that I'm a crackhead or I'm smoking crack. They'll fuck with my face and say that I'm a burn victim. Does she not have eyelashes anymore? Like, it's wild. The playbacks on these videos that I've seen, it's, I don't understand. Why does it make people mad that, like, I'm alive? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I've never hated someone so much. It, I don't get it. Um, it doesn't. Who does she hate, though? Does she even know who she's mad about? At, mad at? Tastes like McDonald's ice cream. frozen yogurt and it's only a dollar or it used to be only a dollar anyways the point is you guys i keep finding myself in these situations where i'm like whose life is this like literally just now um i was sitting on my yoga mat watching some tiktoks and some guy like rolled up on like xavier and i and goes um what did he say so he said he had selling art. oh selling what Someone is saying selling merch. Uh, it sounded like he's saying, I slang art or something like that. And we're like, what? And he said it again, I slang art. And oh, I slang art. So it's just like, it's the Satan ritual people. That's, I got it. I'm like, what? And he's like, uh, I got some hard. And I'm like, what the fuck, bro? I'm clearly six months pregnant. Oh, like some rock? Well, you they probably sold it to you before. Probably sold it before. What did Biggie say in that Biggie Smalls movie? He's like, I'm getting this game to be no social worker. You're just being a nice, friendly drug dealer. Obviously, I don't. I'm not looking for that. I'm like sitting on a yoga mat, minding my own business in my TikTok. Like, what is it about? That you you're you, you're homeless, and you you're most you are on drugs. Like I've seen you. I'm pretty sure you've been on drugs a couple of times. You like turned introspectively. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I, I live as healthy as humanly possible. So I drink energy drinks and then I do detoxes while I'm fucking pregnant. It's not good to detox when you're pregnant, is it? I don't think it is. I'll look it up while we have. I'm always eating. I'm like always ravenous. I'm growing a baby. I'm very active. I'm constantly moving around. What the fuck energy am I putting off, right? So that's one thing that's happened that is like make me say, whose life is this? Um, another thing, I got stabbed. What the fuck? We're gonna, we'll, we'll pull up the stabbing incident after this live since she's going to go on about it apparently. But like, it's your life, Heather. What do you mean? Whose life is this? Like, you think somebody just swapped you out? Like, they just, how would that even work? Wouldn't you know that?
But who gets stabbed? Who gets stabbed? You got stabbed. Well, kind of. <laughs> but you. Who? I, I can't even tell. I've never. I don't even know what to say about it. Yes. Uh, two weeks prior to Dylan's release, I was at a visit um, seeing him in Stateville. And I go to leave and there's like this girl giving me like a real bad, nasty like vibe. And I didn't say anything to her. I got in my car and I left. I came back the next week. She was there again. And the whole visit this time, she's like giving me this real nasty stare and this vibe. I thought she was going to attack me in the prison. And I told Dylan, like, this bitch is going to attack me. He's like, Bitch. all right, I was wrong, guys. I was wrong. Hold on. You can detox while pregnant. That's what, whoops. I don't think you guys can see that. That's what the internet says. Thankfully, detox or doxing, doxing, detoxing while pregnant is not only possible, but highly recommended. I thought she was just being a bad mom again, but if I'm wrong, I got to be like, nah, I was wrong. Um, but I'll switch it back over to, oops, where is it? Let's see. Share that instead. Whoopsies. Babe, you're imagining things, blah, 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 calm down. <laughs> you're always so worried about stuff. You're anxious, this and that. Okay, well, I leave the visit and she like jukes me and calls me a dumb white bitch. And I tell her, I'm not going to engage in a confrontation with you here at the prison. <laughs> if you want to. If you want. Meet me down at the gas station. I say something more to me. There's a gas station right down the street. I don't know you. I don't know what the fuck your problem is. I just saw you for the first time last week and you've been staring me down ever since. I go to the gas station like a bat out of hell. This bitch is chasing behind me or in front of me. We're both like racing to this gas station. I jump out of the car like, so what's going on now? What the fuck is your deal? And she jumps out with two other women all having screwdrivers and they just start stabbing me. They say nothing else. So she called me a dumb yeah okay that's not how it happened that's not how it happened guys it's not how it happened. i thought i was gonna bust it out at the end we're gonna have to bust it out i guess when she moves on to her next story because it's pretty early in the live my bitch gave me a terrible nasty attitude for no reason and then jumped out with two other women and all three of them jumped and stabbed me whose fucking life is this whose life is this whose life it's not my life. My life is like going home after work. Um, or what was the last time you worked, Heather? What the fuck are you talking about? Like working independently, remotely on my laptop all day while my children are at school, wait for them to get home, cook something for dinner. Why would you need to be working remotely? I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, walk, drive, get a ride, Uber to the grocery store. Maybe she meant remote from home. That I, I was just assuming she was out at a fucking Panera Bread working on her laptop because that's what she does nowadays. Um, but no, this is in her fantasy. So I guess she says at home work. Or get something to cook, right? Clean the house. It smells like apple cinnamon candles everywhere. It's clean. You know, it's fun. It's warm and welcoming. Make like something that I can eat for two or three days that's in my, you know, caloric and protein goals. Like... All right, I'll um, let me get the others. I think she's off of the stabbing thing now, so I'm gonna whoa, go grab it. I'll just pull it on the phone, whoa, 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 whoa. and then we can see what actually happened because it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. Where is I had this open before? I don't know. I guess it closed itself. That's fine. Um, new this thing, and then. going to go crazy for a second actually while i'm doing this I'll, I'll keep this playing for you guys some of my favorites would be um ground turkey cupcakes have you guys ever tried that ground turkey cupcakes it's like mini meatloafs you just use ground turkey whatever seasoning and spices you like i personally throw in a bunch of different seasonings and then like a dash of worcestershire sauce and um i don't think that's how you say it <laughs> that's a nice attempt though i guess or maybe a little bit of a1 steak sauce a little bit of ketchup a little bit of mustard diced onion garlic um italian seasoning garlic seasoning 
maybe a little tiny bit of bread crust just to give it substance um, and then like some cheese on top bake it all in a cupcake tin and then put a little bit of marinara on, on top it's so delicious and you can literally eat it for like literally three days you can meal prep it put it in a tupper and save it for three days i don't know what the fuck who i don't know how to live this way like getting stabbed and stuff you know i don't know what they want from me um another thing that made me say whose fucking life is this in the last four years and again all of this is 100 um not dependent upon but like it all started right when dylan started talking to love after lockup so when i didn't know anything about love after lockup i was not getting attacked in any way shape or form um i was working you know in the nightlife industry and i in the nightlife industry so she was you know she was tricking um the nightlife industry guys okay let me get this other thing pulled up here give me one second so this is the report um from what actually happened let me get that pulled up pulled down my computer's just being slow it's okay we'll get there uh bum, 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 this one okay so it might be I can zoom in. I can zoom in and out. Check this out. Whoa. Whoa. Extreme close up. Okay. So it's aggravated battery. Um, on May, that's May, May 26, 2019 at 1937 hours, I was dispatched to the mobile gas station on 344 Independence Boulevard for a stabbing. Upon arrival, I met with the victim now known as Heather L. Gillespie. Uh, Okay, let me see if I can get this where I just got to put it right up to my face. <laughs> um, he was being evaluated by Romeo Fire Department. Uh, so Heather stated that she did not know who the offender was and only recognized her from the, the state correctional center. Uh, Heather was able to recall the physical details about her attacker, only stated that when she was visiting her boy, visiting her boyfriend known as Dylan mckinney at the prison uh the offender was also there visiting with her boyfriend heather's oh okay so the attacker was also visiting with her boyfriend heather stated two weeks prior the offender was harassing her about her hair uh stating that she was going to get you heather stated the same thing that happened today uh when she was leaving the prison at 1900 hours once in the parking lot heather stated that the offender continued to harass her stating, stating i'm going to get you uh, once in the ambulance, I could see that Heather had uh, redacted. Um, Heather then was transported to Brooklyn Hospital for further medical treatment, Boilingbrook Hospital. Uh, Detective Dorsey and Detective Garcia were both uh, went to Statesville to obtain video footage of the victim and the offender at the Statesville facility. So the first part we just read was Heather's fucking statement of all this, which is wrong. To sit. Spoiler alert, it was wrong. Um, so now we're going to get like what actually fucking happened, uh, upon arrival at 500 Remington Boulevard, uh, boiling Brook, Illinois, da, 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 da. I met with Romeo fire department and Heather in the emergency room. Once in the room, I asked Heather if she could recall any further information. Heather stated that she had no idea why this woman would have attacked her, that she, but she did not help the situation due to her temper. Uh, Heather stated that she takes the same way the same way home oh she takes the same way home after visiting her boyfriend and the offender knows that and that she always stops for the gas she always stops for gas at the mobile no heather told him to meet you there <laughs> heather uh started today after ex after exchanging words with the offender both parties left the parking lot and headed north on route 53 heather states that she was driving behind the female on route 53 heather informed me that the Offender had pulled into the mobile gas station before her and exited the vehicle. Heather stated that's when she exited her vehicle and the offender started to threaten her saying, you don't want this smoke. So Heather was the one saying, you don't want this smoke. You don't want this, right? Um, Heather said that it was when the offender pushed her. Um, bum, 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 started a fist fight. Heather stated that the offender's friend exited the vehicle and knocked her to the ground. Heather informed me that that's when the offender began to stab her multiple times with a knife. Uh, the offenders remained in returned to the vehicle and then took off 
in an unknown direction. Heather stated that that's when Redacted ran up to her and told her to sit down and wait for the fire department to arrive. Uh, when asked if Heather could remember the physical characteristics of any of the offenders, she stated that there was three blank females that she could not remember what they looked like. I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? You know this person from the prison. You beefed with her before. You don't know what she looks like all of a sudden? Why? We're going to find out why she didn't want to press charges. Shortly after Detective O'Connor arrived uh, to the Admita Health Advents, whatever. These are long ass names for places. Uh, to conduct an interview with Heather, uh, took photos of Heather's inquiries. See this at the reports. Heather informed uh, O'Connor that he she wanted to go home and does not want to press charges at this time. Uh, O'Connor, or Con it's O'Connor. <laughs> My brain's just starting. There's a lot. This is only the fucking first page. So I'm like, I got to get through this. Uh, informed me that since Heather did not want to press charges to release her vehicle and property to her, uh, or O'Connor's instruction. Per O'Connor's instructions, I collected uh, Heather's clothes to be transported um, to post to be entered into. I don't know what all that means. That's fine. Then uh, this is aggravated battery. Heather was released and transported her back to the mobile gas station. Upon arriving at the gas station, I released Heather's vehicle and phone into her custody. Um, okay. Upon arrival, I placed Heather's clothes into Wagner's possession. Okay, so there's nothing about the weed there. Because he had weed on her, basically. And that's why she didn't want to... She asked someone, I think, to hold her weed. <laughs> Did everybody know? Um, okay. So this is, like, I guess the investigation report or something. I assisted in the investigation of the stabbing that occurred at the mobile gas station. Um, I arrived at the gas station... 2102 hours and spoke with sergeant somebody who informed me of the incident uh the summary and not verbatim i was advised that i wish that this was not so small can i see i can't see it better <laughs> that screen uh okay i can do it i can my eyes are bad as they are um, bum, 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 2100 hours and spoke with the uh, sergeant informed me of the incident. The summary was not verbatim and I was advised that as a witness, a blank pulled into the gas station and observed a white female identified as Heather Gillespie lying on the ground in the area of the east gas pumps uh, with a stab wound to the side of her body. Further, des further described to the officers that knew Heather Gillespie from the Stateville jail where both were visiting, like the Heather and the people she was attacking and attacking her. Uh, after seeing Heather lying on the ground stabbed, I called someone called 911 and waited for officers. Officers on scene briefly got to speak with Heather while they were being transported to the Boiling Brook um, Hospital. Um, there was also another witness identified as blank, observed the entire altercation from approximately one block over, see supplemental reports for. Uh, further regarding witness and victim statements on scene. Um, so then the video surveillance of the incident, which shows uh, the east side gas pumps with no timestamp viewable. Um, the video depicts in summary a white vehicle, possibly a Chrysler, parked in the far east gas pump. Um, the vehicle was later confirmed to be a white Chrysler. That doesn't matter. Uh an off-white Cadillac, I think that was Heather's Cadillac, yeah, <laughs> identified as Heather's, uh, quickly and aggressively pulls up to the gas station um, next to the white Chrysler. A third car, a blue Chevy, uh, driven by Redacted, just as person, I think, pulls into the far east-west gas pump. Uh, a white female, later identified as it was Redacted, exited the white Chrysler, so one of the, the people Heather was attacking or beefing with. Uh, stands beside her vehicle. Heather exited her Cadillac and stomps over to the person. So she was the one that got out, went over to them. It wasn't like she got confronted or anything like that. She was the instigator in this. Um, and gets into the blank person's face. We'll call him Becky. I'm just going to call him Becky, the person that she's beefing with. Gets in Becky's face and begins to move in an aggressive manner. Uh, waving her hands wildly, <laughs> moving back and forth around the suspect and getting closer and closer to the suspect. Uh, very prox 
very close proximity in brackets there. Uh, after less than a minute of arguing and gesturing by the white Chrysler, uh, a physical altercation begins. It is not clear on the surveillance video who strikes first. Uh, Becky disengages in the fight and then runs north of the parking lot, approximately 10 feet from the driver's side door. Uh, Heather chases north in the park. So she she chased him down, re-engaged in the fighting. Uh, Becky, that's who we're calling him. A second fight begins, and both Becky and Heather fall to the ground. Uh, the remainder of the fight off cameras is not visible. Becky again disengages in the fight and then walks to her vehicle. Uh, enters the driver's seat and drives off. Heather returns to the driver's side of her vehicle where she meets with I don't know if this is Becky or another person, uh, which 911 is called and they wait for um, arrival emergency services. Doesn't even sound like she got stabbed in that in that kind of uh, description of the video surveillance. Uh, ba -bum 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 -bum. Where was I? Oh, no. Can no longer see Heather and the person sitting there. Um, a copy of the video surveillance made it to the police evidence camera. Okay, that's all. That's all irrelevant, I guess. Um, and then it says, I arrived at the hospital. I don't know who's saying this. Photographs of the above and, and listed injuries were taken and attached to this report. Heather explained what happened to the officer uh, several times. See this report for further regarding Heather's recollect recollection of events. Heather did not know. Becky personally, however, advised that she got into several arguments with her at the uh, jail. Visiting over the past several weeks, uh, Heather also said that prior to the arrival of police, she requested that Becky take out a long... Oh, take out a bag of cannabis. This is it. Take out a bag of cannabis um, out of her car. So I don't think she asked Becky to do this. This is just another redacted person uh, because she was worried that she would be criminally charged uh, for having it. Heather agreed and signed the attached consent search form. Her consent was relayed to crime scene investigator Wagner, who processed her Cadillac and sees supplemental report for further, for further details. She also signed a consent search uh, for her white iPhone 8. However, her phone was not located in her vehicle or in her personal property. Uh, a second phone, which she identified as her old phone, was located and returned to her the same night. So where the fuck was her phone? That's kind of weird. What? Who was other? Uh, that's my old phone. What was on your? What was on your actual phone? Uh, let's see. I mean, like that's pretty much we got a good gist of it. How many more do we got of these? I don't know. <laughs> Is it just going to be the same thing? Because I don't know. If, I don't know what else there has to be said. Uh, Officer Thurman took custody of Heather's clothing. Um, investigator Wagner entered the clothing into the breast evidence system under this thing. When I requested that Heather come back to Romeo Police Department after the hospital discharge to speak with me um, in an audio and video recorded room, she refused to cooperate, further saying that she just wanted to go home and did not want to press charges at the time. Uh, I received a voicemail message on the 28th that Heather changed her mind and wanted to pursue charges because she got her story together against Becky. Uh, however, she did not have a phone to make contact. What? For me to contact her back on? She was the phone. Well, how, how could she be getting like, I don't know. This is the past actually. So I don't fucking know. I, I shouldn't assume, I guess. Um, however, she didn't have a phone. I only spoke to her on the day of the 28th at the time. Uh, she advised me that she wanted to come in and give another statement regarding the incident. I explained to her that she already gave a statement to the officers and that case would be reviewed by... Okay, so this is... She's already trying to... This is why, Heather, nothing came of it. Or this is what came from it. Because you don't want to press charges. You already gave your statement. You can't change your fucking statement. Nothing's coming of this. Nothing's coming of this, Heather. Crazy ass, Heather. Um, ba bum 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 bum. Change your mind. Your contact back. I should really put my finger where I <laughs> decide to look up. I explained her statement. Oh my god. Heather became very upset with me regarding uh, the continued investigation. Whoops. And review of charges by the state's attorney's office, especially after I mentioned that the video surveillance shows that Heather uh, advances 
on Becky several times in an aggressive manner. Additionally, Heather uh, alleged that she was missing her phone as well at some and some money from her vehicle. <laughs> so she's accused of the cops of stealing her stuff, basically. I got to turn this off. I should probably turn this on. Um, okay, here we go. And now I lost my place again. Anyways, uh, so she's ba she's saying that you stole my property and my money. Um, I advised her that I had no knowledge of any missing money or her missing phone and that she would have to follow up with Officer Th Th Thielman uh, regarding any property contained in the vehicle. See Officer Thielman's report. For further <laughs> it's just like report into report. It's a reportception, guys. Um so on the 28th, Detective Dorsey received a response from Illinois uh, Corrections Department Intelligence Command Magna. That's not a long enough fucking title. With a full uh, report and summary that says not verbatim. Uh, the report indicates that the female who got stabbed by Heather or who stabbed Heather is identified as Becky. That's what we're calling her. Investigators conducted interviews and concluded that GT's girlfriend got into a verbal altercation with Heather. Uh, during prior visitations at the minimal security unit at S Statesville Prison, GT identified as the report as Kareem something. Um, investigators also retrieved phone calls made to and from Kareem on the 26th, approximately 1947 hours. Called blank blank. Had, been had the following conversation. Let's see. I don't know what this is. It's just a lot of redacted stuff. Uh, on the 28th, I called person to see the case provided by the investigators, answered the phone and confirmed that her identity, address, and phone number um, denied coming to Romeo Police Department to speak with me, but agreed to audio record and phone conversation. Um, the summary and not verbatim uh, advised me of the following. She stated that the unknown lady, who was Heather, had been trying to start a fight with her for over the past several weeks while they were both visiting uh, the inmates, so their boyfriends. Um, on the 26th, they both left uh, the prison. Uh, Heather attempted to fight this person while they, were, they were still at the facility, but she did not want to fight her and left the area in her vehicle, which is the Chrysler. Uh, Heather following her very closely. I did, okay, so Heather followed her too. Additionally, while she was looking back at Heather, um, this person believed that she looked like Heather and was reaching for something out of the vehicle, potentially a weapon, uh, and was running out of gas and was on empty, so she had to stop at the gas station uh, on where the incident took place. And then this is Officer Thielman's report, who we were just uh, talking about earlier. So upon arrival, I assisted witnesses, um, this guy and this guy, with uh, compelling, completing a witness statement. Uh, so these were the witnesses. It should be noted that witness one was unable to write English, so I assisted uh, with writing the statement for him as he spoke. Uh, in summary, uh, and then the other one advised that he saw three women surrounding the attacking victim, um, Heather. Okay, so this person said that they saw three women attacking Heather. Uh, once the women were done striking Heather, uh, this guy noticed that the female, white with black hair and a black jacket, pulled an object out of her jacket. The woman said, go, 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 and got back into the white Chevy Malibu. I'm not, I don't remember Malibu being around. The car then left the parking lot, uh, heading westbound, and then see this guy's statement for more, more stuff. This is going to be uh, more redacted stuff. But after pulling into the gas pumps, uh, she noticed Heather quickly jumped from the pump, exit the car, and walk to Becky. Uh, Heather got into Becky's face several times and spit in her face. <laughs> so she's spit in her face. He said, you don't want this smoke. Uh, and then she's surprised that the person defended themselves. Maybe they went a little overkill with the stabbing, but like you she thought you had a weapon and stuff. You're being fucking crazy. And you pursued her after she disengaged from the fight. So, you know, you know, uh, say to the Heather yelled out, 
but blah, 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 blah. probably just Heather Gillespieisms, but that's all redacted. Heather continued to get into uh, Becky's face. Uh, so Becky pushed her back and nudged her uh, out of my way. That's when she hit. Oh my God. That's when she hit Becky in the nose. So Heather punched her in the face and began fighting. Um, and then Becky attempted to get away. However, Heather chased her and after uh, they continued fighting, claimed that she blacked out. Becky claimed that she blacked out. However, she remembered that she already had a knife on her because she did not know this girl that was after her. Becky pulled the knife out and got her to get off, get her, got her to get off of her. Um, so this might have not been Becky, actually. Just, <laughs> I'm just going to call everyone Becky. Uh, Describe the knife as smaller than a pocket knife. Um, and the blade itself was less than the length of a pinky. So yeah, small ass blade. I'm still not condoning stabbing anyone, but it's not like the crazy story that Heather always talks about. I was stabbed with a bunch of screwdrivers. It was a little baby knife. Um, you, you fucking initiated this fight, Heather. You lost, okay? You lost. It sucks to lose, but that's the why they're not getting fucking anything. That's why the police aren't pursuing this, dog. Um, the, 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 the length of a pinky further explained that she did not expect the knife uh, to even protect her. Um, Becky could remember how many times that she stabbed her and stated that what happened was never her intention. Um, Becky felt that another person named Blank out was also uh, in their immediate area to egg on the conflict. So I guess maybe one of Heather's friends. After the physical confrontation, Becky left the area without further altercation. Uh, she advised her friend that witnessed the incident um, was with her and would speak to me. Uh, that person advised me that she had a busted nose and was sore. She emailed a photograph um, that she took of the injury of the nose attached. Um, she explained that she did not have any other visible injuries. I spoke to someone else's friend, uh, identified someone as somebody <laughs> who was then advised that the call was being recorded. Somebody advised uh, me of the following, not verbatim. She confirmed that somebody recollection of the incident. However, she stated that somebody else <laughs> was not egging her on, but the fight was instead uh, telling Heather to not fight anybody. Uh, she had too much to lose. Okay, so telling Heather to fucking chill out. Uh, and nothing further of evidentiary value uh, to add. An audio copy of the conversation with both Blah and Blah was created and entered into Beast Evidence System under the la da 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 I wish we could have got the audios. I really don't like reading, guys. <laughs> I really don't like reading. Um... We're almost done, though. And then we get back to it. It's just clips after this. I'm not reading anything else after this. You don't got to hear my voice unless I'm, like, nagging at Heather or something. Um, so 5, 26, uh, 20, oh, two hours. I was called to process the aggravated battery scene located at the mobile gas station. Um, upon my arrival, I met with this guy again uh, who apprised me. Oh. Is that what it is? Appraised me of the incident? Got him caught up to speed. Uh, in summary, this guy relayed the following uh, to me. The victim, Heather, was visiting an inmate. Okay, so this is just, I'm just going to skim through really quickly, see if there's any new information. Uh, I photographed and processed the crime scene of physical evidence while processing the scene. The following observations were made. Uh, da, 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 that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. There's, that doesn't matter. There was a tan Cadillac parked. Okay, none of this matters. Bunch of redacted stuff. I think we're good. I think, I think we're good. Let me just skim through this. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Reference to the stabbing. Uh, I spoke with witnesses who stated the following in summary stated that she stopped at the mobile gas station, used the restroom and heard someone yelling for help. Uh, someone stated that she saw a girl later identified as Heather bleeding and asked uh, someone to call police. Um, someone stated that she recognized Heather from the Stateville prison where she would both visit their husbands. I asked blank if she saw who attacked Heather or if she had a description of the fleeing vehicle, they stated that they did not know who attacked Heather 
or if they had a description of the fleeing vehicle, said they didn't know uh, the attacker. Uh, Heather, all of you, the, 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 okay. Maybe we didn't need to know that. <laughs> I thought that was going to be something interesting. Uh, and this case is considered closed. Nothing further at this time. Sort to uh, Will County's assailant state's attorney who advised me that after review of the case, there are no criminal charges that could be filed against any participating individual. Done. No more, Heather. That's it. Uh, this is Heather who photoshopped Drake <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. Who knows why? Because she's crazy. That's why. Um, all right. Let's get that pulled down. Let's get the video pulled back up. And that's all my homework. <laughs> so now you guys know. Now you know. The star shooting across the sky. That meme. Now you know. Or I think it's now you know. Here is the rest of her life. So that the, just remember that in the back of your head. Every time she says she stabbed her whatever I had a lot of very risky people around me but they all treated me like a woman like a respectable woman you know even like the questionable people respected me and they were not bogus to me or threatening me or doing anything weird to me they were just i respected them and they respected me nothing bogus so it's just been really difficult to try to understand what in the actual fuck you know um and that whole time that I was working in the industry out of the healthcare administration, out of the healthcare administration field and in the entertainment, nightlife, promotions, party, all the strippers were there, all the ballers were there, all the spenders were there, all the bottle service girls were there. Everyone was there living this life and they all have their claim to fame. And I felt just like, kind of like I was in the passenger seat to someone else's story, you know, like Dylan's story. Like Dylan would tell me like, go do this and I would go do it. Or Dylan would say, don't do that. And I would not do it. Or like it, my plot was 100% just whatever he said to do next. And I lived my life that way as a passenger for nearly four years, waiting for this man to get out for this big home and this fitness company that we were going to run together and marketing um, and all of these other sales and all these other, other like really amazing endeavors that I had never even considered before. I was raised under poor dad, you know? There's like, yeah, there's, this, I think it's a book. She probably listened to it. I don't think she read it. Uh, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She talks about it. I think this will be the second or third time she's talked about it. That I've heard her talk about it, at least. I don't know what she learned from it. Probably nothing. <laughs> I was raised to believe that we can only make money working a job. Have you guys read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? I'm not going to either. Um, I recommended it in my reading book, in my reading list last week. If you guys don't follow me on Insta, I post a lot of stuff about it there. But Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I was raised to think you go to school, you do your best to obey the laws and, and society's norms, you question things when they need to be questioned for the purpose of self-education and to be your best complete self for society and to be a contributing member of society, blah, blah, blah. Do you guys want to do a book <laughs> I'll put it in the members only. Then we'll re I'll read what is it? Rich Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then um, we'll talk about. It. And it's just not really that way when you get out here, you know. Like I'm working at the hospital, and it's my book club now. It's basically put in as much work as possible, and expect to not be compensated for it. Time is what brings a lot of these traditional jobs value. So you get incremental raises, even if you're just barely slipping by at a lot of these jobs, in my experience, you know? So it's like you, the ladies who have been there 20, 30. Cost of living goes up though. And it's not at equal. I don't know what she's talking about, bro. Years, they're getting paid triple what I'm getting paid, but I'm working five times, you know, the workload as them. They don't know shit about a computer. They don't know how to enter in, you know, an EMR. They type like 27 words per minute. They peck with one finger and they're getting paid more because they've been with the company longer, you know? So those are the- I don't think I type very fast. I think I type may maybe 60. I don't think, I don't even think 60. 
I probably shouldn't, I shouldn't be a typer. The kinds of um, ways I was used to living life. And when I got into the industry and I saw like I could sell, you know, these people sunglasses, I could sell these people cigarettes. There's always something these people need, uh, you know, and I need to just find out what it is so that I can give it to them. You know, and once you learn that lesson in business, that is business. That in itself is business. And people don't get that. People like me with the poor dad Rick background, like we think that's a hustle. You know, we think that's getting over on someone. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Heather went to the dollar store and found this really cool item for a dollar and she sold it to the whole family for 10 bucks each. And everyone like talks shit about you at the dinner table. Like, what the fuck? Seriously, she did that. I would say, yeah, what, why are you selling, why are you fucking scamming your family? You got everything for a dollar and you sold it for $10 each. And you think that that's, that's not ethical either way. Like I get like your time and I don't know, whatever. Why are you doing that to your family? But in Rich Dad's story, that would be like, good job, girl. Like you, you're getting it, you know, hustle, get that money. You know what I mean? Like it would be like. No, they <laughs> <laughs> all right whatever let's 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 hear this out celebrate it it would be something that is taught um and it would be something that is accepted over um just the norm of like taking the minimum wage w2 position if you make a nine dollar profit selling one thing right that's about what people make in a half hour or an hour getting a minimum wage check that could take you a 30 second sale, right? So the potential to earn more is, is there in sales and, and in being opportunistic. What does that even mean anyways, being opportunistic? You see that someone is doing a job. Yes, teach me how to do my job, Heather. I, homeless Heather, teach me how to make sales. Enlighten me, bro. I'd love, love to see it. Love it. Love and it's taking them forever and a day and it's very stressful. So you take the opportunity to solve their problem by finding a product that will cut their workload in half and you sell it to them for a profit. That's not being an opportunistic exploiter. That's being intelligent, smart. That's solving problems. And that's the difference between rich dad, poor dad. Rich dad is able to see the potential in solving problems and poor dad is focused on um, morally and ethically showing up the way that society wants him to. Um, and that is hard for me to grasp. Like, how do you balance the two? I don't think there's anything wrong with sales or selling something for a profit. But I do think there's wrong something wrong with taking advantage of your friends and family. So how do you, you kind of have to judge it on a case by case basis. And you know, that's something that I learned from that relationship. And that's something that I will never unlearn. And that will probably, you know, get me to the next stage of my life. Um, if I didn't have that knowledge and information, I would not have it, right? So we, we don't know what we don't know. We can't do what we don't know. And we can't sell what we don't know how to sell or if we don't know how to sell. This is all irrelevant to her situation. I don't know why she's going on about this. I don't I don't get it at all. And her analogies or references, they don't make any sense either. Because like, yeah, if you're working in sales, people want to buy shit. Like they're going to come into your place or they're going to call you to buy the shit. Right. It's just the way you sell things. You upsell. Right. Um, you're describing just scamming your family and saying it's the same thing. So learning a lot of those, those lessons, um, as I said, I think is going to be what, what helps me break free of the quote unquote matrix. Right. The matrix. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, they are just fucking fucking with me, you guys. Like, what the fuck? No, I don't want any hard. First of all, what the fuck is that? Oh, yeah. This is all because someone asked her for if she wanted to buy drugs. No, thanks. Second of all, I'm pregnant. And then, and then I say this shit out loud. And these people look at me like, fuck you, bitch. Like, I'm the one who's like crazy or something. Like, bro, what? Where and, and I say something ignorant, then I'm like, what? Where the fuck? Who the fuck raised you? Where were you brought up that you think it's acceptable to go up to a pregnant woman and ask her some shit like that? And dude gets all scared and drives away. And then I'm like in self reflection mode, like, was I mean to that guy who's just ignorant and doesn't know? Was I wrong? Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. That's crazy, right? And I just get into this 
lifestyle of waiting in a defensive way for the next weird thing to take place and then reacting. And so I'm trying so hard to not, you can't possibly anticipate situations like that, but I have to get better somehow. You don't even need to acknowledge him. You could just go on with your day. You don't have to confront the drug dealer asking you if you want some drugs. Maybe Xavier wants some drugs. Did you ever think of that? At not being so forward in how I really feel. It's really hard for me, you guys. And this is what people have always been telling me. Like, Heather, you're right a lot of the time, right? But like when that bitch called you a dumb white bitch for no reason, I don't even know her. You could have just been like, okay, I'm sorry. You're having a bad day and got in your car and went home. But instead you're like, fuck you, bitch. I'm not a dumb white bitch. You're a dumb white bitch or brown or whatever color she was. So I'm, I'm, I've been learning, you know, that being kind and empathetic and compassionate in those sorts of situations is the best way to handle them. Um, but then at what cost? Because then you're too nice and then you're dying in AIDS Park because you have sacrificed it all and they have taken it all. Right. And that happened to me as well. This is a very echoey ice cream parlor i could i don't think there's anyone else in here but i would be just so intrigued if i was an ice cream worker i don't know what that's called a person who serves ice cream to people <laughs> just listening to this you can hear the echo like she's talking pretty loud and xavier's just in his corner eating ice cream by himself what a life like what a life hold on you guys yeah, AIDS part. the fuck is aids part um no so anyone who's here yeah i'm pregnant 26 oh. weeks pregnant my due date is february 15th 2024 um and i try not to really answer a lot of the comments because i'm still getting better at like i have adhd okay first of all so i lose my just like that crazy gallop family i train of thought a lot um when i try to focus on the comments months and keep you know going with what i'm saying it becomes so difficult i i just can't i can't do it i get so sidetracked i lose my point entirely um that happens multiple times which is why i have always said i am so fucking amazing at being just regular who i am that's why i always say i'm so fucking amazing at just being regular who i am said nobody ever except heather gillespie just <laughs> right now what the fuck kind of sentence is that if i had an editing team or someone to sit down and help help me learn how to edit um i wouldn't really need any sort of outside assistance at all i could create hella content and do the job of an entire marketing agency on my own but i i know how to edit only with snapchat instagram and social media um features i don't know how to edit with any sort of external editing software and that's work it's easy yeah i don't know man like if you know how to i don't know how to edit on tiktok or the whatever you just said but i don't think it would take forever i think iMovie is probably easier to use than whatever the fuck iMovie's on your phone too you don't even need a, a this thing this kind of this nonsense that drives me nuts every day you could just use your phone it's just really small screen. Actually, maybe you got a big phone. I don't know. Worked for me. You know, I got my following when I was working in uh, content sales to 50, 60,000 followers um, just on one platform. But I, I can't, I don't, I don't know. I'd like to have an independent software where I edit on my own. Um, and then I can go in and kind of answer comments um, and see what the general, you know, tone is in the audience and kind of speak to that on my next content, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you guys, it's just been a series since 2020, 2019 time of situations where I literally have to say, whose fucking life is this? What is going on? Please, God, help me. I've not worked in any capacity of sexy entertainment content. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> Why is she even trying to say that? What, there is the whole podcast, the like the second stream. We ever knew about Heather, at least I ever knew about Heather. I heard her describe like things that I can't unhear or think of. Like, 
I don't know. That got really demonetized. I can't really say what we... You guys can go back and listen to it. <laughs> but it's something else. She definitely did sexy work or whatever the fuck she just said. Sales or anything like that since 2018. Um, I think I did maybe two or three lives on Cam Soda or many vids or my Vixie in the early months of 2019. But as soon as I got a job selling renewable energy, I never went back to that. Um, then the renewable energy scam with Dylan, which was. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. the results of what happened with the with the renewable energy sales. It's the same thing. I'm asking, like, who the fuck's life is this? So I start getting followed and questioned by all sorts of people indicating that they're from not the Chamber of Commerce. What's that regulatory body of government? The FDA, not probably not the FDA, um, the Better Business Bureau. Do they have that in America? That sues businesses. Um, and regulates businesses, whatever. They start following me. The Better Business Bureau, I think that's it. Saying that they're from, I just learned, you know, the trade. I knew it for like two weeks and then I went out there and started killing it on sales. Why? Because I'm an effective communicator. Uh, it's That's a big red flag, by the way, the Better Business Bureau is coming after you. It's easy for me to speak to people. Um, I'm, I'm sociable, I'm, I'm nice, I'm funny, right? So it's easy for me to talk to strangers and therefore that gives me a competitive edge in any sort of sales capacity. So no shit. You you don't say that nice people can get people to buy more things. I never would have guessed that. So I learned the specs on the product and then I start selling the fuck out of it. And I made I that's the new newest way of selling things I've ever heard of. Usually I don't even learn the product. I just sell it. You know, I think fifteen or two thousand my first check. And for me that was fucking amazing. I'm like, what? I worked four days this week and you know, I was the kind of um, what's the, the errand person, you know, I wasn't paid hourly commission only. So when our teams ran out of stuff, I was the one who had stopped selling and sacrificed my time to jump in my car and use my gas and go get the team more of everything they needed and come bring it back and set it all up. And what did you need to buy for the renewable energy sales? What are you talking about? You went out and got coffee or something, some donuts? I'm also, yeah, I'm picturing like the Better Business Bureau, like going out in cars and finding her or something. What do you mean they followed you? They followed you around town and they followed you on Twitter or something? What are you talking about? Um, it was just fucked up the way things ended. So Dylan ends up going out on a date with a bunch of different people who we work with, with my bosses and coworkers. And I show up to work Monday and everyone's just smiling in my face. And this goes on for several weeks before someone finally tags him in a photo out with some other random bitch. What the fuck? Okay. So I lost my shit. I'm like, I just waited five years for you. Now I'm not allowed to go to any outside gatherings or be a part of any sort of parties or any, you know, celebratory company meetings because you're so busy worrying about who you're going to stick your, you know, what in next. So I have to sit in the house by myself in a state of depression, feeling isolated and alone. Like, how dare you? You know, I waited all this time so that you could come home and be my partner, not my murderer, because that's what he did. He killed me. Every ounce of my soul was dead. It's slow. Stop thinking about Dylan. Poor Xavier, just off in the corner, eating his ice cream, being like, I'm a fucking Dylan again. Really coming back to life. Xavier helps me a lot in ways that you people will probably never be able to understand. Um, and he is so patient. Like no man would ever be okay with a woman being fucked up and traumatized and sexually traumatized. And, you know, just, I have three kids that are all over. Two of them have one father. The other one has a different father. One of them is in the Northwest Burbs. The other two are like, yeah, it's a red flag for a person to continuously go on about this every day of their life. Yeah, that's a red flag, Xavier. But it doesn't mean like if you've gone through those things that you're any less of a person or anything. Like, Heather is just, she's such a fucking interesting person, bro. <laughs> Or in no, two of them are in the Northwest Burbs. The other one is in the Northwest side of Chicago. We have no car. So he's walking around with me everywhere to get groceries for them and drop them off on their doorstep and watching my exes treat me poorly and 
law enforcement blatantly ignore me and all this other stuff that's going on. And he stays very, very patient. Um, does that mean he's perfect? Absolutely not. Um, Why is he coming up with solutions to get out of this situation? <laughs> What's your incentive for being with him? He's just, he's very patient. He's the only guy that I've been able to accuse him of like stealing other people's skin or people stealing his skin and his dick regrowing or something. There's some crazy stuff I've heard coming up. I don't, I've never, I don't think I've watched most of these. I haven't watched this at all, this fucking live stream. Uh, but he has been there for me. And as he is there for me and reliable for me, I slowly start to begin to trust, you know, a little more and more and more each day. Um, but it's like Jordan Peterson said, when you're living through. Jordan Peterson said that like lobsters and people are the same. And you should go pet stray animals whenever you have a chance to. And something else. I can't remember, but I don't think that advice is for you, Heather. Shit like this in your life where it's like, what the fuck just happened? This is You don't even have a room to clean. What are you what fucking advice are you taking from Jordan Peterson? Not possibly my life. You can't even think about healing the trauma from those events if those events keep recurring. You have to first find a way to break the cycle of abuse before you can even say you know, how do I heal from this? And another thing that many, 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 many um, very well-known psychologists and psychiatrists and uh, self-help gurus and public speakers, um, including Dale Carnegie, um, Jordan Peterson style, uh, um, not Gary, oh my God, I almost said. I was expecting you to say Gary V. What's wrong with Gary V? Gary Coleman, Joel Olstein. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, wait. Isn't Gary Coleman like the midget actor? I might be. Oh my God. I don't know if I'm getting him mixed up with some of them. Religious I'm and non -religion, religious motivators, they all go back to the same thing, which is that um, you can't, you can't possibly, you know, uh, turn into who That's you are cool. if you're being held in who you, you were, you know, um, let me wrap it up here. Yeah, he's like a midget. He's like four foot eight. Maybe that's not midget height. He's like uh, a short guy, Gary Coleman. For you guys, because they love to follow me around and kick shit off. Uh, and I'm not going to give them the opportunity. But uh, I just wanted to jump on and, and talk about the fact that I have submitted numerous help tickets to 311 uh, for shelter requests. I have been displaced from my home since the airing of the show Love After Lockup, season three, six episodes. I have. It was season three. Okay. No criminal record. I don't do drugs. My biggest uh, character flaw is that I was incredibly patient and loving when it was not deserved. It was taken advantage of. And I have been physically separated from living with my children since January of 2020. I've gone to the court system seven or eight times for petitions. Uh, I have the same, you know, care team and professional team on my side who has copies of pretty. Is it actually a little person now? I didn't even know that that was a derogatory thing. Uh, <laughs> how tall am I? I mean, I could. No, I didn't. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say something crazy, but nope. Pretty much uh, every three to six months, handwritten updates of everything that's going on. Um, so there are a lot of people who are aware of what's happening, and I'm very confused as to how human and civil rights have not been upheld in this case, um, you know, in any way. Uh, but that's me. I'm Heather Gillespie. My Instagram is coco.chanel.ysl, C-O-C-O dot C-H-A-N-E-L-L-E dot Y-S-L on Instagram. If you want to know more, there's a whole lot of different ways I've been victimized, bludgeoned, beaten, raped, stabbed, robbed, um, among numerous other things. Uh, so please give my story some life um, because I need help, um, you know, and it's not an inpatient doctor kind of help that I need. It's a why are people chasing this woman out of every job that she gets why are people i don't think that's happening people stealing all her money and you know swiping it out of her debit card accounts why isn't law enforcement responding when she files a claim that she's been sexually assaulted why when she turns in on a live stream of instagram a sheet from her bed that has human bodily fluids on it but she lives alone how come there's no police report ever completed you know these are the kinds of questions i have that i've had uh, for four years and counting that i will continue to have until i get answers you're not gonna i mean 
they answer her. She just doesn't like the answer. So she goes and files fucking police reports in other places and shit. Um, so thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'll hop on at a different time when I have somewhere else, which is pretty much rare because of, well, you know. Oh, this is weird. Um, this is like a bottle of spit with a little bit of blood in it, kind of. All right, so just to briefly recap, um, we left Belmont Harbor where we had been staying for a... Oh, hold on. What? Belmont Harbor, where we had been staying for approximately... I don't know what that was, but I was too zoomed in. Definitely six. All right. All right. Well, I don't know. I should have edited that out. I just did. All right. So just to briefly recap, um, we left Belmont Harbor, where we had been staying for approximately six days uh, at the Yacht Club um, in a tent using electricity to provide heat to the tent because some days it's gotten as cold as 30 something degrees. I'm borderline anemic. I lose feeling in my fingers and my toes very quickly. Um, so we were there for six days. Um, every month as we do, uh, when Xavier receives funding or I receive funding, um, Xavier repays me for the money that he has offered and agreed upon to repay me for what I've spent housing us and feeding us and clothing us um, since we met in the form of groceries that I drop off to my children. Um, it's about $50 a month uh, each month for each child. So approximately $150 each month that he has been repaying me. Like, what do you mean he's repaying you the money? Repaying me the money from like me spending... But it's our money, but it's like, whatever. She's crazy. She's crazy. Also, Graciela. Hello. I yelled it. I yelled at you. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Um, even though he says it's to repay me for that, I always tell him I consider us even if I'm pregnant and you're my husband and we're planning a life together. Um, and I get my funding, you know, five days after you get yours and I but you still have to pay me back. use it for both of us. Then it seems like it's just ours and you know, we don't really owe each other anything. And he agrees. We make this walk to see my big kids and drop them off the, the groceries and snacks. And then we do the same for the baby or in reverse, go to the baby first and then to the big kids. We just made this walk. Um, it's incredibly exhausting. It takes us three or four days. I got to hug my son. Didn't get to see either one of the girls, but I did drop off groceries for all three. Um, and now we're up and heading back to the city because they don't have any resources in the suburbs. Well, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but she's just not supposed to be doing this. She's not supposed to be seeing her kids. She doesn't have any obligation to give them fucking food or anything that she doesn't need to do that they have a family that does that for him don't be wasting your money this is why she's homeless that's why she's always going to be homeless because she does stupid shit with her money like that and buys makeup and like paints her belly and shit uh not only that but they do not like homeless people out here at all um the city has 311 which is a central scheduling system that dispatches Salvation Army to place and evaluate every homeless request. I have been on that waiting list since three since 2021. 311. Um, every time you go to a hospital in the city or a doctor's office or a church, they give you or law enforcement interacts with you, they give you a list uh, about this long, really small um, type of shelters. You cannot get into any one of them without being placed there by 311. Again, as I said, I've been on the waiting list for 311 since 2021. She did the thing, the Y12173. Actually, that sounds really familiar. Yeah, I think I think I know that off by her, but now nah, that's fucking concerning. Uh, but Chase, Rass, tech boxed. Text box. Um, it tech boxed in, beaten, stabbed, and even bludgeoned to cause me to lose my employment and income during numerous other victimizations since the release of Dylan um from the idoc and the taping of love after lockup i'm never gonna get over that guys i'm gonna talk about it every fucking day every day
one. I've been able to get my own apartment and multiple jobs in that time, and they still haven't called me back. I called them as recently as Friday um, of, of this past week that just passed, and they said the same thing, uh, that there is nothing available. Max yeah, I think you'd be good at field hockey or like roller derby. Those are two sports. Uh, is there women's rugby? Maybe rugby. Maximum capacity at any one of these places is 50 and that they have been at capacity for several years. Northwestern Hospital said they have not been successful in having someone be picked up from 311 since the COVID. Now, in addition to all of this that's going on, so what do I say about the suburbs not liking homeless people? In the city, you can at least find somewhere to sleep. Um in the suburbs, it's not that way. And neither one of the city or suburbs have shown any sort of consistency or honesty or transparency with regards to shelters. I highly doubt that. I think she gets a whole list of shelters and shit, but she just says they're all faker. <laughs> the city is not being transparent with me. They're hiding the shelters all over the place. You got to really dig for them. Like, why would they do that? They just don't exist. And if they do, they are breeding grounds for crime and drug use. They are not safe places for a person like me who's just, you know, homeless. Um, so with that being said, we are constantly looking for somewhere to go. Xavier's father said that he was going to help us. I've been oppressed out of numerous jobs. I need somewhere to go. I'm about to give birth. No one has addressed the situation about being denied. I mean, you're like, what? Two thirds of the way, so they're not just the best to give birth. But the, I mean, life choices, Heather. You have what? Where have you been doing the past six months? The same thing every day, and it hasn't gotten you anywhere. So you probably should try some new things. I don't know. Denied medical care. No one has addressed the situation about de being denied uh, counsel with my lawyer. So I'm being going. Nick Albuquerque is checked out. He's not coming back. Going through all this abuse and human rights and civil rights violations and not being permitted to seek any sort of formal representation for any of it. I'm exhausted. Um, I'm not even going to report on this. Just know that you can mark this calendar down as another day of abuse. Did she say dentist offices were shelters now? I seen her do a video where there was a guy like busting the door off of a uh, public transport. I think it was... I don't know, like a monorail or a subway or something. And she was like, this is what happens when you house homeless people in the fucking subway car. So like, who the fuck is doing that? Nobody's doing that. Um, so then she's like, literally four years reporting this abuse daily. Make it make sense, please. <laughs> there is no functioning court system in the world that can make this make sense morally, legally, or ethically. I think she just can't comprehend it overall uh i don't remember the last time i had a day that was not filled with abuse um law enforcement's been on the scene they've been informed i've tagged them and everything um this is no quality of life for anyone how does anyone looking back on all of these videos make any sort of legal ethical or any kind of sense of the fact that a woman with no substance abuse issues a college education and a desire and willingness to make a life for herself is being oppressed out in the street on the side of the road. Because all of those things you just listed were lies. And that, that doesn't describe you at all. It's actually the exact opposite. And that's why. Sexually assaulted at times, robbed at times, bludgeoned at times, stabbed at times. How do you make sense of that? You're mad at me because I'm not dead yet? Stay mad, bitch. Stay mad. I don't think any of us are mad that she's not dead yet. I don't want Heather Gillespie to die. I just want her to... I don't even know what I want. <laughs> to be honest, like... I want the kid to be away from her. And then she can go back to fucking Coco, Golo, Pro, Solo, the Chanel show, or whatever the fuck it's called with Xavier. My favorite character in all of this. And she should just get her tube side. Other than that, I don't want her dead. Why would I want her dead? And more Jehovah God. For the outpatient um, community, having my blood work that Dr. Jensen ordered completed. It's November the 7th. And I gave them a copy of the updated narrative to also scan into my medical record. With all my links, my phone number, my... So, the doctors don't need this. 
The doctors don't need all your Coco Chanel YSL, a GoPro solo production. Yo, cash app. Why the fuck does the doctor need your cash app? What? <laughs> oh, no, her phone number. Okay, don't look at her phone number, guys. I don't want to get rid of the live chat. I mean, she posted fucking ever, I think. It's okay. It's okay, guys. And all that, I just always like to have my medical team uh, having access to the same information that my... Um, you know. All your other teams? Look, tell me about your teams. Am I zoomed in? out? Oh, there we go. That was weird. Yeah. You know, the rest of my team staff. Look at him. Oh, I don't know. He looks he looks frightened, even though I can't really see his facial expression. Yeah. Oops. All of our stuff. me just me what does this say uh just just left this at the hospital uh, i visit regularly to be scanned into emr uh police medical staff and public social media pages along with my lawyer and friends and family all have this document and others on file prove this extended period of abuse and oppression i don't think the hospital fucking cares <sighs> so sleepy so cold 26 weeks pregnant prenatal Second trimester workup. Spend another hour at the hospital. This hospital in Northwestern say that the orders Dr. Jenkins, that's a real doctor, <laughs> Dr. Jekyll gave me are unclear and include multiple vaginal swabs and no outpatient labs perform gyna swabs and uh, Medicaid is refusing. Uh, it's allowed me to switch plans. I need another lawyer, please and thank you. Nick Ricada, where are you? Heather Gillespie needs you. Come out, help her. I am Heather Gillespie. My professional background is in medical admin, law, and ethics. But I changed my focus to marketing and sales, and now I'm homeless. So I must be really good at marketing and sales, guys. Okay, this is like her get-to-know-me session. I'm not going to read all these. They go, like, I'm just, I just fly through them, so... Enjoy a blast from the past so she looks like she's not what she is now or whatever. I don't know what the point of this was, to be honest. Um, that's a dress. That's her out with people when she used to have friends. When she used to have some friends here. This is her with black hair and a Christmas hat. This is her kids. I don't know why she put that there. Um, more it's nonsense. It's just nonsense curated this and this and this and this and i photoshopped drake into a fight creator for some reason and i went around here and i was young in these but i'm not anymore and here's my fucking, fucking mirror um here's my ass for some reason click here look at this this is all like in one day this is all just one day i don't know um and then this i think this is the end of the first video thing let me see yep let me switch over so this was the second live she did this week um this live i haven't seen so i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on in this it'll be fresh for all of us some of the stories i have seen but i have not seen this and it's 14 minutes i think yeah 14 and she's red you guys so today has been uh, another rough day um but better than you know other days so we have to take our blessings where we can get them right um we have been being bothered all day um as you guys know if you're not new here i always talk about how we go out um to my children's place to their homes where they stay with their fathers in the beginning of the month when we receive funding. Uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, she was very angry about Dr. Jenkins um, trying to kill her for uh, prescribing her iron, which is what most women need. And I drop off any little special little toys or whatever I can, food, um, you know, crafts, whatever little thing I can drop off. So we took that walk from downtown and dropped them off some food and we found somewhere. So it's 20 miles and in, in a matter of three days, pushing the cart 
Xavier mostly, but um, you guys know that we condensed. So I had a cart that was weighing like literally 300 pounds. He had a cart that was weighing like literally 300 pounds and we combined them. Now we have a cart that weighs 600 pounds and life sucks. Got rid of a bunch of shit, whatever. So I am not used to, and I really don't think it matters how much time passes. I'm never going to get used to not living with my children and being with them every day. Um, it is the worst, like literally my worst nightmare. Um, but we, we come down and bring whatever we can. Um, you know, I bring, like I said, groceries and her hair is weird and little crafting ideas. I brought them. Well, to the baby, Alexis, she's 10. I brought her what I planned to bring Viviana, who's my 17 year old and her brother to help out with the little kids because they have a bunch of little nieces and nephews. And it was pumpkins with these super pretty like copper, gold and silver sequins and um, some bling gold so that they could take these little baby pumpkins that are all different sizes and shapes and bling them out and put them in the center of the table for Thanksgiving for like a little craft idea. And then I brought them like 50 or $60 worth of groceries, you know, nothing crazy. I really don't have it right now. I don't think your kids are going to care about any of this. I think like when they look back, um, you're, you, you think they're going to give a shit about all this, but they're not. They're going to be like, my mom showed up every fucking week when she wasn't supposed to, to bring us garbage we didn't want or need. And then she made videos about it, trying to make herself look like a nice mom on fucking Instagram. So people would give her money. I don't think your kids are going to like you. I think you should probably just get the fuck out of homelessness. Get the fuck away from Xavier. Better your life if you want to ever see your kids again. It's not going to happen like this. It's not going to work. Um, but they're my babies, you know? So even when the family members are like, they're okay, we're, you know, we're doing everything we can and they have enough and you don't have to worry. I'm still like, yeah, but I know you guys work your asses off to barely make it. So I am worried, you know, and I, I'm at that. Another thing is like, <laughs> they would probably make sure you weren't homeless if they cared. Like, I, maybe it sounds me. I don't think they care because fuck, dude, you don't give them a lot of reasons to. It's never going to go away. I'm a mom. Uh, those are my babies. So we did that. Um, in the suburbs, especially, it is nearly impossible to find a spot to like set up a tent and go to sleep overnight. Um, I have my little like spots where I've passed out narratives to officers in those areas. They know what's going on. They know that I'm respectful, clean, that I don't make a mess, that I'm not out here like making a, you know, a big ruckus and they usually leave us alone and let us sleep. But that's not the case everywhere. And it's a lot of miles that we have to walk so that we can get to an area where it's not like that. Uh, so it's just very stressful, you guys, and uh, that's what's going on. Now, in the meantime, anytime I can stop and I have the mental capacity, I start calling all of these areas and agencies where I have open or pending cases against other people. So since 2019, I've been being victimized randomly. Some of you know me from the show Love After Lockup. Um, speaking of which, I just emailed Ellen Madison today uh, regarding all of these issues um, because maybe he can help. You know, I don't know. Who's Ellen Madison? Is that like the producer for Love After Lockup or Ellen, Ellen Madison? Okay, I'll, I'll look him up. What, what's going on in New York, right? So we'll see what he says, but it's just scary because I don't. She locked her kids in a closet? Why? What the fuck? I don't know who's to blame. A lot of the cast members from Love After Lockup have died unexpectedly. Is that true? I don't know about that. It might be correlated with like them have been in jail. Usually, usually people who've been to jail live a, a little more extra than life than others. Mysteriously. Larger um, than life. And it's extra larger than life was the thing I was meant to say. It's just fucked up. These these people are voiceless, you know, and we don't know what's going on. Now, with my specific set of circumstances, I've never been a victim of any sort of violent crime in my life prior to 2019. So, well, it's going to be the same thing, my love, until I receive justice. Someone said in the comments, it's the same thing every time. You're right. You're right. You know why? 
because I'm not going to let it go because I'm not going to rest on my morals because I'm not going to just give up on being a mother because I'm not going to allow myself to be killed out here in the street without putting up a fucking decent and fair fight. Okay. So if you don't like it, feel free to exit, you know, and see you later. But for anyone who does care, uh, we finally found a place to post up and this is my 12th month sleeping in a tent consecutively. Well, eight months uh... consecutive and Okay, so it was that incident, like, when she thought, the battering ram thing? The battery ram, battering ram, that will I am. <laughs> um, I don't think she knows who she's talking about, or unless there's another Ellen Madison, because Ellen Madison is dead. Unless I misheard or something. This is Ellen Madison. She, not, she was an actor. I don't know who the fuck Heather's talking about. Who knows? Oh, we can just take my word for it if you can see. <laughs> um, blah, 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 blah. where did too many windows from the window? Four months from four wow. months of last year or three months of last year when we were taking that road trip to the Pacific Ocean. Who was here for that? We took a road trip to the Pacific Ocean walking and never made it. We only made it to Cleveland or something, Iowa or Ohio or some shit like that. And then took the Greyhound home. Unbelievable. Ow. Anyways, back to the point. Um, I'm 26 weeks pregnant. We get to a place where we can set up the tent. It's like a place where I know is like zoned to set up the tent. It has electricity. We can charge our phones. Like, woo, we are winning, right? I call the state's attorney's office on Friday of last week and I ask them because I've been I've been trying to ask them if you get stabbed, bludgeoned, beaten, robbed, all this shit, why is there no one, you know, following up on these cases? And why is no one in contact with me? I've had the same number this entire time. As my entire audience knows, it rings incessantly with people who want to threaten me, right? Those calls go through no problem. Why would the state's attorney's office have a problem getting a hold of me? No, right, yeah. Alan, Alan Madison is a producer or director for Love After Lockup. So that's who she's, that's who she's talking about. Yeah, to the wow. Skeet, skeet. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I get on the phone with the state's attorney and they give me the name Juan Madera, Juan Madera Romero or something like that is the, is the culprit who bludgeoned me, got arrested at the scene of the crime, just got sentenced in March of this year to 30 months in the penitentiary, 30 months. I cannot find him anywhere in the inmate search anywhere. I was not informed of the court date, nor was I offered any victim services or assistance of any kind. And I had to spend five days in the hospital because of that. In addition, I'm pretty positive that all of these other attempts on my life are connected to that. And thirdly, it's quite possible. I know 100%. Who are all these people trying to, trying to kill Heather that are doing like, I would imagine if someone did want to. Heather, it wouldn't be too hard. Like she's a pretty easy target. I mean, like she broadcasts where she is all the time. And I don't think she's very good at like Xavier's not very good at defending her. And like, how is she going to defend herself? I'm not encouraging anyone to, but I don't think anyone's trying to kill her. Is my point. For a fact that Dylan has a cellmate named Juan. I didn't know this guy's name, so now I'm like, is this guy Dylan's former cellmate? And did Dylan put him up to this? you know, or did the show curate this or what the fuck is going on? I just found this out Friday. So I called the state's attorney's office again today to try to get more info. This lady, like she sounded so dumb. She just sounded the dumbest. Like she did not work for the state's attorney's office at all. Like I tell everyone, you know, those ghetto ass people that work at the state's attorney's office, downtown Chicago or the county clerk's office. And they treat you like shit and roll their eyes and chew their gum loud and blah, 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 blah but at least you get your information, even if you have to wait six hours for it. This is not that. These are like people who are intentionally like, fuck you, we're not giving you your information. And I'm trying to remain calm on top of that. There are construction workers coming up to our tent, telling Xavier, like, can you move four feet north and three feet west because our, our bulldozer radius, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they need to do their work and you're in their fucking way. Why is that such a like hard thing for her to get? Uh, you have not done construction on this site in four years, sir. So, yeah, so they should, it's overdue. 
They need to do it. What the fuck? You, what? We pass by this site regularly. No one is ever working here. What in the actual fuck? Give me a break. I'm on the phone. It's like unbelievable. I wish I could make this shit up. I, this is my. Hey, Bill. Is there a reason you haven't started the fucking project yet and we're just paying you to sit around? It's because Heather Gillespie's on her phone and we can't move until she's done her fucking phone. <laughs> sure, that would fly. I'm sure that would be fine. Real life. And I keep telling the law enforcement because, you know, they came to this is not my life. There are real bad guys out here, like real bad guys. I am not one of them. It is scary out here for me. Why are you doing this? I am six months pregnant. Like, what is your fucking deal? And what? Ew, stop. What is happening? Stop. I don't know why I paused to raise my eyebrows. What is, what is he doing? <laughs> okay, anyways... That's the update. Um, I called. Also, I went to the hospital yesterday with those orders from Dr. Jenkins. First of all, I never started the iron and the Tylenol or aspirin that she ordered me. It's contraindicated. If it's not contraindicated, it's definitely not indicated for any disease that I've got. Like, I don't know what the fuck that was for. I take prenatal vitamins and that's it. What are you talking about? So... Does it get worse? What do you mean you forgot about this? That was just weird. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I hope it doesn't get worse. Uh, Gracie Ella, thank you for the one ninety nine. Um, I would love to get more, but well, if you don't even worry about it, um, you guys don't need to donate. It's just there if you feel like it. I appreciate you, but don't feel obligated to. Um, <laughs> I don't just. Does it get worse? Like, what is Xavier doing to her? I took her orders, her, her lab orders, to First Community and Northwestern. And both of them said, we cannot draw these labs. Like, one of them is like a vaginal swab. And the other one is like a strep throat test. What the fuck is this shit? And I'm like, okay, thanks. I'll take them back to her. What the fuck? I called DHS and Molina. And they're all like, oh, um you're strapped in to your current health insurance policy and you're not allowed out. And that's a forever thing. Like, whoa, what the fuck is this? Okay, well then can- Do you think she's high? She seems kind of high to me, but I might be a biased person for this. You find doctors in this policy that can manage my pregnancy before I give birth? Cause I'm due to give labor in three months, go into labor in three months. Like, what the fuck is going to happen when I literally go into labor and all this fucking chaos is still going on? So, I, mean, I wish I could tell you guys that I was just joking or this was for entertainment purposes only. But unfortunately, this is what the fuck is going on around me. I cannot say it's my life. I've never been involved in anything like this. I have no fucking clue what is going on. I swear to God, you, it is the scariest I literally keep saying to them, do you guys know there are real bad guys out here and you are leaving? That, James would say that all the time. James would say that all the time, guys. Also, I said this last night. Or no, I wasn't on last night. I wasn't here. But the night before, I was like, James is going to come back. He's going to come back soon. Like very soon. He might be back right now. He might be. I don't know. Uh, back in the sense like live streaming. Um, He's kicking around. So if you guys like James, get ready for a crazy Christmas. I'm predicting. Leaving me out here with them. And sometimes I am afraid that they do stuff to me. And like police are just like, yeah, well, you should file a complaint with Copa. Like, what the fuck? I'm in a tent. Dude, what the fuck is happening? So anyways, that's that. And I'm going to call the kids soon and check on them, see how their day was, because that's literally what I live for now. Um, just knowing that they're okay and how was their day. Um, otherwise, I started having tremendous amounts of anxiety and being so worried um, when everything is probably okay, hopefully. You know, so that's about it. 
Uh, pleasure checking in with you. If anyone wants to sponsor a photo shoot, did you guys see my bio uh, little reel that I posted? Did you like it? Just a couple of my favorite projects, but not all of them, just like six or seven of them. But I have hundreds of campaigns that I've curated myself, done my own hair for, done my own makeup for, styled myself for, and even used a timer to to do a photo shoot with. So even use the timer. That's how professional they are up in here. Even busted up the timer. Um, I want to continue doing that, even if it's not profitable yet. It's the only thing like keeping me from like wanting to die. Well, that and the kids and like being able to bring them, you know, little groceries and know that they're okay. And like, you know, of course, Xavier for not letting me die on the street alone and be murdered and raped. Um, and everyone else who's helped that I don't know how to name or no names for. Um, yeah. So if anyone wants to sponsor any food or photo shoots right now, I'm not dying. I have a, a couple of hundred for groceries. So I, I'm eating um, for anyone concerned. But for those of you who usually donate on a regular basis, I am okay right now. Thank you so much. If anyone has any surplus and they want to give me $100 for a photo shoot, that would be so amazing. Don't give her 100 Who the fuck is going to give her $100? I hopefully, hopefully nobody. That's, that's a crazy ass to take some photos with your iPhone and a bunch of crap that you don't need. I want to do um, the theme end of second trimester. Uh, because we made it for anyone who has been here as well. We lost twins, a twin pregnancy, 18 months gestation um, on December 26th of just the year that passed. So we made it past that time. And next week marks the beginning of the last week of the second trimester. And I would love to curate some sort of really cool, eccentric photo shoot, you know, to remember this time just so i can look back and be like remember that time i was homeless <laughs> that was some good times guys we fuck it yeah, we were such rascals back then so cash app only for that please a uh, dollar sign which is called the cash tag for any one of you who don't know what that's called the dollar sign on cash app is called your cash tag and then after the dollar sign you write cash tag and then your name that's your whole entire cash app cash tag the whole thing collectively dollar sign and then whatever your name is so that cash tag is heather my first name like weather but with an h go pro solo no spaces and thank you so much um if anyone has any other suggestions um you can put them in the suggestion box i'm just kidding my dm's open if you're not a stalker or a creep um you guys have a great day So that was something. Um, so this is uh, the stories again. And then somewhere in these stories, there was another live, but we're going to watch the live after the rest of these stories. Um, and then we got the eggs video with some other like older clips thrown in it, I think. Um, and that'll be it. But this is... 12 minutes. I think the live stream after this is 35 minutes. And then I don't know how much long the eggs video is. So we still got, still got some time. Um, yeah, that's it. It's going to be over two hours for sure. Like the stream is. So black go out. Okay. So good morning, you guys. I wake up this morning. If things are not already hard enough, um, my email, my business email is being flooded with emails about therapy. Don't sign up for that. HIV, don't sign up for that. Don't. Well, therapy. What's wrong with therapy? Don't have any. I mean, like, I've, I don't sign up for HIV, but like, what should, so I think therapy would do some good, Heather. Of those things. Uh, and stretch zone. Like, get the fuck out of here. Go away. How long does it take to create your own Gmail? I'm so confused. I could ask you the same question, Heather. Just change your change your Gmail. Then they won't know what your Gmail is. Um, that was some long thing about people stalking her. This is old pictures again. Um, this is her. What is this? 
I don't even know what this is. She's eating some weird shit. Uh, understand the difference between being a complainer and being awake. Okay, so since I have so much harassment again, I have to file a complaint to the COPPA. Oh, to COPPA? I don't know. I think she met the cops. Yeah. Thanks for submitting it. Okay. Well, these cops. Here we go. The cops. The cops came to her tent. And uh, something happened. I just I just remember seeing cops. I'd be like, I can't wait to see this. So let's see what happens. Are refusing to. Xavier has get, tried to hand them a piece of paper with the narrative. And they've now refused it like six or seven times. I have no bra on. I'm on the phone with the city, with downtown and buildings departments. I'm trying to get business done so that we can start working on these empty properties. We've been on a waiting. I am trying to work on my project to cure or solve homelessness. And these officers are just harassing Xavier. Homeless for 311 for how long now? Since September 2021. And we are in a public area and they're removing Xavier from me, which is illegal, threatening him and doing something weird and sexual, I think. I think they're doing something weird and sexual to poor Xavier. Why? What do you mean? And broad daylight? What are they doing? Elaborate, please. Please and add these officers to the investigation. Again, refusing the narrative and perpetuating a whole bunch of drama. Xavier's supposed to be here getting his work done, not right getting there. harassed on the side of the street. What work does Xavier have to get done exactly? I'm curious. Operator, thank you. I thought we were going to have some dance and Kermit music. Nope. Nobody knows how much you cried, but God does. You will overcome this because God, Jehovah God, is with you in your battles. This isn't the end of the video. Why? Okay, there we go. Did you poop? Nope. Uh, okay. You don't have the time. <laughs> uh, emergency heating repair program. You want to go repair heating systems? I mean, she's mastered that hair dryer, right? I'm just, I don't know how the fuck she gets it to fucking stay on all the, all the time. Maybe she does know how to fix heating equipment. I don't know. Uh, there we go. Uh, I love enchilada. Two peanut butter cups from Quest. Never seen that. I mean, are they like Reese's? Is this an energy drink? That is some Christmas <laughs> shit. <laughs> Elf shit. Something that's very hard to read because it's white on yellowish orange. <laughs> if you know me about the thing, what? About the only thing to take my mind off of the situation is with a photo shoot. As we get closer to Christmas, you know I will be using every penny on my children. If anyone wants to sponsor a hundred dollar photo shoot, I would. Uh, no, give the hundred dollars to your fucking kids then what are you talking about uh for the end of second trimester themed fall glam look please feel free to do so today or tomorrow cash app only please is the photo shoot the gift you're going to give your kids is that is that what's happening here that's just bleh. if you don't want to be a, if you don't want to be a sponsor you go fucking sub to this thing This is funny. So she was saying like, ah, I'm a fitness, wellness, lifestyle coaching boss. And <laughs> BCG did a little clip of her, uh, what it's like to be a fitness trainer or if Heather Gillespie was your fitness trainer. Yeah, I look like a ninja. In a sports bra and athletic apparel, I look a little more athletic, right? What about now? You look exactly the same. I don't know. You're just bouncing that smitten kitten. How you doing? A little more athletic, 
right? So if you're driving by, what are you seeing? What are you perceiving? And how are you judging the situation? I think you're just uh, doing jumping jacks on the street like a crazy person. <laughs> I know I wouldn't think to go up and ask you for fitness classes. That, that's the case. And I don't know. I, you could have at least maybe sped up the video to make it seem like you're running faster. She also swim, like looks like she's dog paddling in the air while she's running. She ran on top of the bench. And then, yeah, she took the knife to the fucking gym that one time. She's something. Uh, that's such her fucking thing for her website and stuff. More crap like this. She was annoying. <laughs> She's annoying posting all this. All right, now for videos again. So it's raining. Um, we had a long day super productive as far as production goes um, and demonstrating the things that are happening uh, and also opening up dialogue to everyone who is involved or witnessing um, you know what type of self-reflection do you have regarding these types of occurrences and what type of future for society are you hoping i just hope like the kid has a safe home. That's all I'm hoping for this Christmas. This is weird. Usually I would cut something out like this because she does a lot of these motivational things. But this is like a, when your ex tells you, you'll never find a man as rich as him. So you become richer than him instead. You're homeless. You're what? What? I'm probably going to get copy hit. Straight hip lip battering ram and should never ask a man to provide more than he can provide. <laughs> that's 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 right. That's why I only ask Xavier for the bare minimum. Wrong. A woman should always live within the man's means. And if the man has the means, great. If he doesn't, don't ask for it. Yep. And if you want more, work together. Bessie, are you okay? Bessie, are you okay? Bestie, are you okay? 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 <laughs> I don't know. I, does, does Heather want people to do that to her? Bestie, are you okay? All right, just checking on you. The six Japanese techniques to overcome laziness. I thought this was interesting because I, I think Heather's a pretty lazy person, in my opinion. <laughs> Number one, Ikigai. Ikigai. Discover your purpose in life. Find something that makes you want to wake up each day because your purpose fuels you. That's Tether's kids, but she doesn't do anything to get out of the situation she's in, so it's kind of useless learning this. Regarding that last post about real men having women in their soft girl era, yes. However, they will never soften a woman who is hardened to protect herself and then leave her there alone. Okay. Oh. Technically, this is where the live stream is supposed to be. So I'm going to switch the live stream now so we're in chronological order. This, after when we get back here, is crazy. This is someone escaping. What is this called? This is a subway, right? It's not a monorail. I thought it was a monorail earlier. Um, so this was her cra another, this is her last live of the week. Unless she's like live right now. I don't fucking know. Um, it'd be crazy if we stream sniped her one day. Maybe. You will know, we'll never know. But yeah, this was the last live of the week, and then we'll finish up with the stories after this. It wants to be difficult. What's up, you guys? Looks like there's a chainsaw going off in the background. <laughs> Okay, so this last five days, we have been walking from downtown to the northwest suburbs to drop off groceries, snacks, and a couple little craft ideas to my children, which is not enough. As I've said hundreds of thousands of times, I'm their mother. I feel like she's gone to visit the kids like three times a week. This is all from this week. What the, like, this is the third video we've heard of this. I thought you already did that. 
what do you what every week is a mission like this and then back i don't know man they're talking about running in circles or spinning your wheels like heather gillespie is the definition of this um they are my only responsibility god given uh and they continue to uh, interfere with my ability to parent my children who is they i wish i could tell you whoever's responsible for the influx who is they i wish i could tell you does she actually answer a comment that's crazy i've never seen her do that of uh, messages threats in-person assaults uh her law enforcement my custody agreement is not um able to be enforced because they by policy don't enter the home of the other parent if it's a joint custody situation i would need to subpoena him back to court which i've tried five times um and get in front of a judge and then the judge would either hold him in contempt um or do nothing depending on you know if he showed up in order to have him in contempt held in contempt it would need to be proven that he why are you trying to get like the one person who can care for your kid put in contempt of court also like i don't think she knows what the fuck she's talking about if you're putting contempt in court that's because you're like disregarding the rules or being disruptance or something judge judy will be like i'll throw you in no she actually she doesn't she just says get the fuck off my show but a normal judge would say i'll hold you in contempt of court um why do you want your fucking exes to be arrested period like what the fuck he could not follow the court order for some you know good reason um, and that he was not dodging the subpoena and the summons, that he was simply not receiving them. Um, now, when he knows my phone number, it leads you to believe that there's something else going on. Uh, the same situation has been going on with the big kids, except I can see them very, very briefly. I give them groceries. Prior to this year, it was not like that. So I've been displaced from my home since January of 2020. Uh, prior to that, the children lived with me full time in my custody and care four or five days out of seven and then you put them in a closet and you imagine the battery ram and then cops came and took them for good reason while you wave lamps around she looks really out of it in this one is she on drugs in this one she got a weird filter i don't know her face looks bigger all i don't think the hair would be i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about all day long um, you know regular mom things i stayed home monday through thursday i worked uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Huff and air duster, regular mom things. Um, and I was able to support my household with that income. Uh, since that time in 2020, I do all of these creative projects and continue to evolve my art because I feel like I'm being held in, in, in bondage, you know, not, not like the sex bondage, but like when I speak my words fall on deaf ears or ears that are not willing to act. When I act, my actions are diverted, covered up, um, or misperceived. And what do I mean by that? I just wrote something in my notes today. Um, I think it's a good, you know, a good tool for myself. By the way, we're right now in Portage Park. So we spent uh, one night here. Uh, last night and then the night before we spent here we arrived very very late river grove uh police moved us around after i dropped off groceries to my children um i was exhausted where did they move you around to like i hate i hate that hair dryer. why is it always on it's so bad i don't think james and her could be together because james has those like noise canceling headphones actually maybe they could i don't know but they wouldn't be able to communicate because Heather would just be sitting in the corner of the fucking hair dryer going, and he'd be sitting in another corner with the, the headphones, the noise canceling headphones. We've probably walked, I'd say, close to 30 miles in the last five days. I'm 26 weeks and a few days pregnant. That's six months. Um, and I'm still actively being denied regular medical care. I went to First Community with the orders that Tasha Jenkins Jensen or Jenkins wrote for me, um, and they said they don't run that type of lab work there. Northwestern said the same thing. So it's apparently some sort of vaginal swab to test for genetic issues. That doesn't even make sense. Outpatient labs don't run vaginal swabs on patients. I didn't even notice she had ice cream in her hair in the in the McDonald's video. Because I was just focused on her failed her making her face fat. <laughs> that was weird. I was like, what the fuck? I know she got ice cream in her hair. 
Uh, she told me they were blood lab work, uh, complete second trimester workup. I waited and waited. No phlebotomist ever came out at first community. And then about an hour after we checked in, uh, they came out and said, we, we don't have the capacity to run those tests here. So I need to, I'm going to try, I guess, Swedish covenant, you know, um, but that's far. Uh, it's a far walk and I'm exhausted. You guys, I, I think, isn't this the live from yesterday? I thought this was the live from yesterday. Uh, I can double check, but that's what I thought we were watching right now. I'm tired. On top of that, my children are out here, I believe. Mm -hmm. Alexis has been, not outside, but out in this area um, mm -hmm. or farther mm -hmm. west. So it's incredibly discouraging to me mm -hmm. when I feel like anytime I get an extra couple dollars, I just want to go bring them snacks or say hi to them or give them a hug. Um, but that I can't because I keep getting manhandled back east, you know, and sent back that in that direction. Um, it's just very frustrating. You know, I don't want to sleep in a right. fucking tent on the floor with cement underneath me. Agree. I'm Heather Gillespie. I have a production company. I've been successful in numerous different business endeavors. I know how to sell. I know how to sell with morals and ethics. Um, you know, I know how to sell anything from fashion. I can sell anything. Um, you know, to makeup, to medical equipment and, and things of that nature. Um, so I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I, um, I also, sure. if you guys know me from... It tripped me out because like we're technically past midnight. So I was like the 11th, this is from the, I was like, did I miss one? But no, nah, it's just, we're, we're past midnight. Are we past? Yeah, we are past midnight. My brief appearance on the reality show. Um, that's nothing of, of, you know, truth uh, at all. Um, that period of my life was completely misconstrued. Uh, there were five days that were filmed uh, basically nonstop. If you can imagine how much, content you get in a, of a person when you're following them with a camera for five straight days uh, there's a lot and all that needs to be done is you play with the editing and you make that person appear to be different than they truly are um you know and when there are the sh the reality show has more followers on its socials than hit reality shows like uh re um real world on mtv or um is real world still a thing that's some old shit I haven't even thought about the real world in forever. Is that still on? You know, other VH1 and, and BET and uh, E reality shows have on social media. So it brings up a lot of question as to, you know, what was the impact of that slander on my businesses, et cetera, and so forth. Um, so I always do business under the moniker of GoPro Solo, my umbrella, my, that's the business, that's the brand, that's the name I applied for my tax ID number on. Um, every time I try to get with someone to sit down, now I've been working on credit repair for, you know, five, six years, self-lender. Um, you know, I had my first prepaid debit card. I got my first auto loan with Capital One, paid my car off entirely, owed them nothing. Uh, and she always goes on about this, like anyone fucking cares or like it's an accomplishment or anything like that i got a car i paid it off i did normal adult shit before i was homeless and they destroyed my vehicle two months later bad things happened in my life i never got over them i just i never got over them guys i'm just i just bitch in this fucking tent every day about it so i i keep on wondering to myself who benefits from me being kept in an oppressive state who benefits from me having no credit of my own someone who wants to control me who benefits from me having no money or income of my own? Someone who wants to control me. What kind of control do you have over a human being when they have no money of their own? They can't. Wait, there's a show called Surviving Bear Girls? Like, wait, what happened with Bear Girls? Bear Girls is like the man versus wild guy, right? Did he get, did he get into some mischief? Like, what? Episode five. I had to look that up. Is that just like another one of his survival things? Or he's he did something bad and it's like, I don't know, his victim story? Oh, it was a competition show. I love Bear Grylls. I'm glad that he doesn't have fun. It's like, oh no, it's like a Me Too allegation. It's Bear Grylls now. Uh, um, bingo. Good job. <laughs> That's what I was like. Uh, Bear Grylls is like a survivalist. Um, no, he's perfect. He's a good guy. He is a good guy. Uh, he 
if you watch man versus wild or like look it up he did celebrity stuff as well like he went out with will ferrell they just survived for like a day or two uh in the wild to teach you how to survive um it's kind of like survivor man but they have like a production crew and everything it's more better i think than survivor man survivor man he's just like i'll go to logo on my equipment life sucks and bear girls is like this is how you get out of sticky situations so i'd recommend him over survivor man pick their own meals they can't live where they want they can't drive what they want they can't go where they want pretty much all power is in the hands of the person with money which is why in these many many days that i've spent either walking aimlessly or sitting down in this tent all i think of are solutions to those problems how can we create a society or a community that does not depend on money um, and still be okay that removes that uh, that sort of power and control uh that any sort of oppressor would would be able to have over you um but then i keep seeing these social media personalities who continue to offer credit repair and cleanup and i get a little hope back even though my identity has been stolen is it possible that someone can help me with my EIN and with, you know, possibly, um, you know, getting the LLC on my businesses so that I could get back to work and separate my personal identity, which has been so slandered, so degraded, so humiliated, so abused from my ability to earn income. I deserve that. My children deserve that. <laughs> um, no matter what jurisdiction or vicinity we're in, Survivor Man was Canadian, too. <laughs> he was a little crazy. I attempt, at the very least, to hand them a narrative. Can you remove this? Les Stroud, I think was his name, Les Stroud. I'm trying to shoot a video. Blue? Whatever's causing the walls to cave in, please. Um, Every jurisdiction where... It looks better like this. I can kind of see. Why are the walls just falling off, though? That's very strange. And I re record myself at least attempting to bring them a narrative. Uh, the narratives include direct links to all my social medias that show proof of the bludgeonings, of the stabbings, of everything that has taken place. I go back to some of those pages, and at times that proof is not there or missing. Then I check again, and it's there again. I believe that there are people like Eric Schall who are using their ability to hack technology and manipulate technology to show the proof they want to show to support the storyline they want to support. Who's Eric Shaw? Did I miss something? Either way, there's only one truth. I've never violently attacked a single person in my life. I've never done hundreds of thousands of dollars of fraud. I've never been involved with hundreds of thousands of dollars of fraud. If I've even been sitting next to someone who has been involved or doing in fraud, it would be in a matter of under a few minutes. And you can't Unless you're with someone for years who's doing it, you don't get to those types of numbers. So Why? I was expecting him to put the wall back up. Can you make the wall stop collapsing? I can just take them off. Sure. So if I were in the same room as someone doing fraud, it might have been them ordering food or it might have been them ordering an Uber or something of that nature. I have no knowledge of this for you and nothing else to share. And I've been saying that for four years. If I was able to do fraud, do you think that I would be spending my last four years in a tent on the side of the road, sleeping in my backseat of my car, starving certain days, having to go into a grocery store and steal a protein bar? Heather, don't steal. You have food stamps. Instead of wasting them for food on your kids that don't need it, buy yourself shit. No, right? I would not. So, and now oh, you wouldn't steal it now that we have sponsors for food. It's like, great. I'm not starving to death. I'm still outside in the tent. What am I supposed to tell my children? Nothing. Don't talk to your children. How do I explain to my children that Dylan coming home, which they knew was supposed to be the financial uh, assistance that I needed was supposed to be the physical protection from being trafficked, from being raped. Don't talk to your children from being robbed from having Don't our house broken into and that dylan just decided to disappear and now i've been outside ever since handling all of the blowback from the abusive you know nature of that relationship and was it even really dylan the dylan that i supported through prison who was beating me and doing all of this or was it the dylan that had his neck stepped on and was being you know coerced and forced i don't even care anymore what i care about is 
what do I tell my children so that they know their mother is not just giving up and out here partying it up? I haven't attended a party or been part of a social gathering in years since Halloween 2000 and probably 20. Uh, nothing about my life has been about me, about... That wasn't even that long ago. She went to a party when she was homeless? Because she says she's been homeless for four years. 2020 was three years ago. And she went to a Halloween party. Healing about rest, which is what I was promised not only by authorities, but by therapists, by my doctors, by my friends and family. And that's the only thing that I need is a safe place to live, to not be bullied around, and my own income. Resting and healing doesn't mean I'm not working. It means get the fuck off my neck. I cannot breathe. And that's kind of where I've been. Yesterday, you know, police came again. The police came when we were uh, on our way back from River Grove. And, you know, as we stopped in River Grove uh, after leaving the grocery store that's in Franklin Park. So that's four additional police contacts in two days. It's absolutely exhausting. It's absolutely detrimental to your stress levels, to the effects on your nervous system. And none of them want to take the narrative. So you're here wondering... What are they going to do with the narrative? You're going to read it. They're going to be like, this is nonsense. And I don't know. I, I think like the narrative is just to distract them while they like make their getaway or do something. I, I have no idea. They must know that no one gives a fuck about the narrative at this point. Do they really think like one person is going to read this and be like, I have all the answers and I understand. Clearly, it's not what you think it is. Does she revise it or does she just like keep it the same? I don't fucking know. The narrative is, when I first saw Heather, I thought the narrative was going to be like, I don't know, just a one-off. I didn't know it would, it just keeps going. It's just a thing, constantly. What I'm doing here, but I've prepared you a typed up document with every police report, or at the very least, the ability to understand what was in the police reports, if they don't exist, due to this technological boxing or whatever it is. In a, in a paper like this, and I'm passing it out to you, what the fuck do you mean you don't know what to do or you don't want to accept it or what am I doing here? You know, what what am I supposed to be doing? If I apply to 40 to 100 jobs on average per month, and I have for over three years, if I, if I do the same amount of police reports, I've probably filed 40 to 100 police reports in the last year or police contacts and attempted to pass them out uh, the narrative, which means on body cam footage, every single police contact remains, right? So they have more than enough. Then I find out last week as well as yesterday that Juan Madera Romero is the attacker from the tire iron bludgeoning. Random fucking name. She just pulled out of her ass, I think, because there, there's no one. No? No, I don't know. I don't think so. Now, two weeks before Dylan's release, I was attacked by three Mexican girls. My children are Mexican. I what? I speak Spanish. I have no gang affiliation. These girls were saying racial slurs. Dumb white bitch, fuck you. I don't know them. There was no controversy. They picked a fight with me at the prison. I told them, look, I'm not going to run from you, but I will meet you at the, and I'm not going to fight you at, you know, the prison. But I'll go to the gas station where I always fill up my gas. And if you want to do something there, we can talk about it there. We already read this. I'm glad we already read this. So if, you, if I don't know what time stamp it's at. If you want to know the real story, we uh, we read the police report. Um, I don't know. I think like halfway through this. You'll see a whole bunch of like typing on screen and me reading with a phone right to my face. That's how you know what part it's at. And I went there, and instead of it being one girl, like was in the visiting room studying shit with me, she had two girls hiding in the back seat. All of them had screwdrivers. All of them jumped out of the car and began stabbing. I forgot she says she's biracial, even though she's fucking Irish, I think. <laughs> me repeatedly. Three on one. I was unarmed by myself, probably wearing something like four inch heels, you know, a cute housewife outfit, something adorable driving my Cadillac that I bent over backwards, working my ass off for. And the people who attack you are always the people driving around in some rust bucket with not a dollar in the bank. I'm poor also. I come from humble beginnings. Leave me alone when you see me doing a little bit well, right? Back off. Isn't that how we all feel? Give us space to breathe. Let us take care of ourselves. 
Um, and unfortunately, that was not the case. I was taken by ambulance to the hospital. My car was left at the gas station. I believe it was low jacked at that time and mic'd for sound uh, at that time. Um, when I got back to the space, I was. Does she, I think I was. Whose hand was I looking at today? <laughs> I was looking at some woman's hand today and I was like. That's a weird looking hand. I can't remember if it was how I think it was. Wait, no, nah, it was um never mind. It was one of the Gala sisters from like a really old photo back in the day. And she had she was holding something and her hand looked like I don't know like this, but scarier. I don't know. It was dropped off by law enforcement. My clothing had to be chopped off my body because I had so many puncture wounds and I was bleeding from so many locations. They couldn't count them, and they needed that for the police report. I've never been made aware. Now, those that woman who did that signed in her license plate number and her state ID to the prison system for a visit right before doing it. They know who she was. Have I received victim services? No, I have not. Have I been reimbursed for any of my lost work, my lost time? I worked only three days a week. Both times I was attacked, I was attacked on the weekend when I would be working on average three to $500 an hour. If I was taking in-person consults. Why were you at the prison then? Why were you beefing with people? Why weren't you at work working? Should have been doing that. If I was doing something over the internet, at least it would be between five and $50 an hour on average. So to, to incapacitate me from earning my own money, by violent assault and have law enforcement do nothing about it and then you attach all of these other violent assaults why did the violent assault prevent her from working if there was no injuries like she didn't have any fucking injuries right if she was hurt to the point that she was disabled she could collect disability they wouldn't even need to worry about any of this she wants like restitution or something for something that the, the DA or whatever already said that there's no case. No party can get charged with fucking anything. The Tampa Bay uh, stalking, the Miami approach, um, the getting punched on the CTA while I was asleep. I'm asleep alone on the CTA in, during year three of this homelessness, a few months before meeting Xavier. And someone punches me on my head, you know? to wake me up and says, and it was a woman saying that was him. I don't know why he did that. Want to be friends and getting in my face to have no protection from law enforcement for these things. I don't know how to fight. I don't have a weapon. That's why you instigated a fight, right? At the screwdriver incident. You're putting an unarmed person in a, in a space filled with drug addicts, people who haven't slept in months. It's not safe. I don't do drugs. I don't carry weapons. If I have a pocket knife, I'm lucky to be able to get it open to peel my cucumbers. That's what I carry it for, for snacks. <laughs> my pocket knife is for snacks, guys. Right? I got punched at Whole Foods for no reason. I think we've heard this, actually, because I was like, I can't picture someone just punching someone at Whole Foods. At Walmart, yeah, for sure. Whole Foods? Who punched you at Whole Foods? downtown on Chicago Avenue. So there is something nefarious going on. My name, my likeness, and my and my character, you know, your personal character, who you are, what you pride yourself on, your goals, your ambitions, it's being, you know, slandered. And it's they're doing so in a way that creates someone um, to think they're my enemy. I have no enemies. You know, you don't stab someone for no reason. And when they stabbed me, ambulance came. I was bleeding out everywhere. They cut my clothes off. The police marked my car with little centimeter tape markers of how much blood splatter was all over the place. And then after I left the hospital, they... This sounds way more dramatic. It was a pinky-sized knife. She had one stab wound, and the person using it to defend themselves from Mather didn't even think it could protect them. I... Do, do, do I, mean, I think they mentioned a little bit of blood, but not splatter. Like, it's just splattered all over the car dropped me off in the paper pants and paper shirt that the hospital gave me makeup all over my at your request you said i don't want to talk about this i just want to be released to my property 
face, not a dollar to my name. I don't even know if I had shoes on and my money and my, my extra cell phone had been stolen from my uh, glove box of my car at Montclair. They were breaking into my house on a regular basis, stealing all of my money. They were stealing my money, my eggs. They were styling my hair in the middle of the night without my consent. Stole about $1,200 the first week I had been there. The first week, $1,200 cash and a couple of outfits. They broke my tire, my uh, shower rod off of the off of the uh, wall when I wasn't home. I had to go spend fifty dollars on a Blink security camera, and they disabled it. I went to Grant, who was the uh, booking agent, leasing agent, who uh, I did my um, my lease agreement with and paid money to to move in and for my first month's rent. And I said, I haven't even been here a week and my apartment's been broken into. My food's been stolen. $1,200 cash is missing. And I have police supports for all this. I'd like to leave. And he said, you can go. We'll let you out of your lease, but we're not giving you back your security deposit. I'm sorry, what? What was that? You wrote all over the walls and the fridge. And you're probably doing something nefarious in there. I wouldn't give you your security deposit back. No, just from what I've seen on the lives. So I can only imagine what you didn't show yeah yeah no and then we continue paying because i've got nowhere else to go and they bring four fake cops i call them god of magog cops what was what i have short term memory less i don't know what happened impersonator cops wearing police uniforms who are not real cops to batter ram my door down and throw me into the street where i've been ever since i get a job at katir i start paying I'm going to get out right now, babe. I get a job at Gatier. I start paying for Airbnbs for Xavier and I. She goes on for another 15 minutes. I'm going to get out right now, babe. Right now. Um, And I get pregnant with twins, likely by rape. I suspect by rape. Xavier says no, but who is he protecting really? Right? No. When someone renders you unconscious and has sex with your body for six to eight hours, that's probably a rape. You know, I don't believe he, Xavier takes full responsibility. It was me, babe. It was all me. Yeah, right. Okay. We have sex on the regular husband, uh, whether I like it or not. We have sex regularly or whether I want to have sex or not. We have sex regularly and it's not for no eight hours. Okay. That's for damn sure. So what's going on there? And I don't, I don't know. Someone's wearing Xavier's skin again. All of this has been reported to multiple hospitals. Every single officer live stream, live stream TikTok, live stream YouTube, live stream Instagram, messages, phone calls. What more do I am I expected to do as a civilian victim of, of these of these issues? I've been on a waiting list for shelter placement with 311, not because I refuse to work or because I can't earn my own income, because I'm being prevented from doing so. I'm not being allowed to do so. I'm being oppressed out of doing so and that's what's been happening since 2020. i've gotten 21 jobs since that time i've been lied to robbed beaten chased threatened out of each and every one um never been reprimanded at the job never been told to leave because i wasn't performing well nothing like that so it's incredibly confusing for me i deserve to be indoors somewhere uh you know warm and safe uh you know working out regularly taking care of my body, my mind, and my soul, not being held outside in a tent, you know, feeling like there's a chance I could still be being sexually assaulted. It's sad. I'm six months pregnant. I need somewhere to live. I'm glad she's off of the fucking numbering by weeks thing, at least for the pregnancy. Like, yeah, you're six months. Just say six months and say 26, 27, 25. You forgot. You made two posts like right after each other with different fucking dates there. She also does some kind of weird tutorial to show like how far along you are in your pregnancy with like a piece of string or something. I don't know if that's legit or not. Heather says it is. Sponsors, I've been asking. I don't know if I'm in a tech box again, but I have been asking for $100 for a photo shoot. Um, Always with the tech box. Um, for the last few days. And I haven't really received any response. That's what makes me think I'm in a tech box. I don't ask for money very often from my sponsors, but when I do, I tell them what I need and how much I need. Where did Techbox come from as well? That's like 
when she thinks her shit's getting like shadow banned or suppressed or they're fucking with her Wi-Fi or I don't I don't really even know what fucking tech box means. And nine out of ten times they they make it happen. So it's very confusing for me to be in a new location, be fucked around with again. I haven't been fucked around with by police in months. I've been promised that this whole thing was coming to an end and that I was going to be receiving justice. Yet my abuser, the people who did all of this to me, the people who stabbed me, the man who bludgeoned me and for no reason in broad daylight at a car wash, a stranger bludgeoned me over the head, said that it was because I wouldn't give him a ride to the, uh, to St. Charles asked me for a ride. I told him I'd give him a ride to the Metra, not to St. Charles from the city. And he literally just started beating me with his, with his fist, punching me in my head, my face, my arms, my legs. I'm a woman. I don't know how to fight. I've never been in a fist fight in my life. What are you guys doing to me and, and why? What did I do to deserve this? Leticia, that's a Leticia-ism. Uh, I don't know. Who did it first? Who wore it first? And he got charged at Maybrook uh, in May of this year sentenced to 30, supposedly 30 months in prison. Neither him nor the woman who stabbed me, I was, or the three of the women, I've never seen them. I don't know their names and I've not been permitted to attend any of the court dates. That's what victims. Those things can happen, BCG. When you make up your story, <laughs> you gotta remember all these just crazy details. She said the dude's name. Did, and did, did anyone find anything with that guy's name from this week? I didn't go digging. I was digging in other ditches. And other cesspools, but um, I don't think there's, I don't think this guy fucking did anything. The services are. The victim has the right to be present and testify before a judge and jury as to what their experience was. And the victim has a right to receive compensation for everything she has suffered or he has suffered as a result of the attack. I haven't received a penny. What? You don't have any disabilities from the attack or the assault. Or whatever, you know what I mean? And even if you did have some disabilities, even if there's people with disabilities that do what you're trying to do, just better, just way better. Ripzilla got hit in the head with a car, and he's out here making his uh his videos. He's doing just fine. He's going after all these moms on TikTok. Like that's that could be you, Heather. But and I don't know why it isn't. You have way more cognitive ability. So I'm sleeping outside in a tent, separated from my three children, six months pregnant, possibly by sexual assault, possibly by my husband, Xavier. Why do I do air quotes when I say husband? Because there are multiple versions of Xavier. Some of them are a fucking sweetheart, and I could tell that they would give their life for mine, or they make it appear as such. Some of them literally lay on top of me with their body when I'm cold to heat me up, and they hug me and hold me and tell me they love me and tell me that this suffering is over and that I'll never spend another night outdoors. And then things are okay for a few days and then they're not. And then some of them are very feminine and act like trans cross. I don't know. It sounds like Dylan. He just, uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. I think like there's like the tiger King, right? That great, that crazy guy, lots of people's own tigers. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea, but Dylan, Crazy Dylan. Dress. Wear their hair in a funny little pony. So when I say my husband Xavier, there is an Xavier that I love with my whole entire heart. Most of these Xaviers, even the ones that are awful, uh, I can sense some sort of very, very predatory something going on for them. And my heart breaks for them. Uh, and I can't, I don't want to see that happen to anyone. But they the, her heart breaks for the predatory versions of Xavier. Is that what she's saying? There is a husband Xavier, and he does the things I would expect a husband to do. What happens on the days he's not around, and how do they all look so similar? They're the same fucking person. What are you talking about? It's like my eyes only see a filter of his face with whoever this person is. Not with everyone in the world, you know, just with the one who's pretending to be Xavier. His height changes the size of his you know what changed that's why the stream is called xavier's magic stick because the size of his dick changes <laughs> i mean i don't know maybe she doesn't know how dicks work like usually um 
they get bigger and smaller. Uh, it fluctuates based on uh, arousal. But like what I think she means, like fully up, it changes fucking length somehow. Like Inspector Gadget. He's got an Inspector Gadget dick. I don't get it. You know, and, and, and I don't ask for it. And I believe in monogamy. And I don't believe in having random sex or, you know, casual are, sex well, at well, all in any means. Quite the opposite, actually. The only sex I've... They are outside. So that would make sense, actually. <laughs> like if you're homeless, eh, maybe you won't perform as well in the cold. I had in my life since I was probably... 20 years old is either contractual, meaning you've given me a background check on yourself. I know where your entire family lives. We have an agreement of what will go and not go, et cetera, and so forth. Or it's been my husband. Those are the only two, you know, things that those are the only two types of sex I've ever engaged in. And it's been completely monogamous and under, you know, from, from my opinion and perspective, only with one man since I met Xavier. And I was, I was abstinent for close to two, 18 months before that. Unless if you count being Celibate, you mean, right? Absent, all right. Is it the same thing? I thought abstinence was like, you've never had sex ever yet. And then celibacy is when you have, but like you're just choosing not to. And then when you're an incel, it's like un involuntary. You just can't get laid. I think that's all right. Maybe, maybe they're synonyms. Maybe you can uh, swap them out being sexually assaulted abstinent i call it abstinent but really it's traumatized because i was hurt so many times with sex that i have no desire left to have it as xavier proves himself that starts to go away and i start to feel more confident in my in being sexy and in loving him and in letting him love me but only that's how you got pregnant right for long enough for them to take away the xavier that treats me the way a wife should be treated and replace him with a trans or God only knows what. So it Xavier trans some days has been exhausting. I have gotten no answers from the, from the state's attorney, from the district attorney who claims to be Xavier's brother. Carlos is his name. Um, and I've been trying to reach Xavier's father, Carlos. Uh, I have messaged him numerous times. The messages are not going through. I have, a text transcript of numerous messages going through to Xavier's father, Carlos. And all of a sudden last night, they just stopped going through. Why do I want to call him? Xavier's father is supposedly in charge of banking. They blocked you. That's I'm pretty sure they blocked you. And high risk loans for people who don't have traditional paperwork to get the loans. I want to see if he can get a loan for us so that we can move in on one of these vacant abandoned properties, file permit to begin work and create an apartment before my baby is born. So you want Carlos to get a loan and give you all the money so you can just get a place to fucking wreck. Yeah, I'd be blocking you too. I wouldn't be fucking entertaining that shit. What are you talking about? I have three months. His dad stopped answering the phone. I'm not being prevented to see a doctor regularly. I have to go into Northwestern's ER to make sure my baby's okay and order my own blood work through my primary care physician's office that I call them, ask them to write up. They wait and wait for my PMD to say, yes, it's fine. Back the orders over to downtown and then I have the blood work. So I'm managing my pregnancy as if I were my own doctor, but I'm still sleeping in a tent being prevented from earning my own income and choosing who my doctor is. This is unacceptable. This is not acceptable. I can't bring a baby to a tent. So Xavier says his father bought a lot. Oh, a whole building? She would be running some prostitute fucking shit out of there in like a week. Less than a week, probably. And she'd be the fucking queen. She'd be running that shit. There'd be some murders there. I mean, I don't want to get her the fucking place, but that would be that would be crazy. That would turn into like a Netflix documentary if you got a fucking building somehow and did this shit. Off space in Berwyn for just him and I. I've yet to see it. I've yet to see it. When does that happen? I miss my scarlet. The district attorney, the state's attorney, no one is giving me any information on victim services. When is that going to be corrected? When will that happen? 
I'm not trying to walk back and forth from the downtown outside camp area to the northwest side outside camp area. I don't have a drug addiction and I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I have nothing to do to pass the time other than think about all of the ways you people have victimized me or watched me be victimized. If you're not personally responsible, but you know of what's happened, fill in the blank. On top of that, I received text messages saying- Fill in the blank, make it make sense, guys. Saying that Xavier allows people to rape me while he fucks other women in my tent next to me. What? What? I can't even, I don't believe, I can't picture Xavier doing that. Not my Xavier. It must be one of these imposter Xavier's. That, no, don't believe it. How would that happen if I weren't being rendered unconscious? And if I filed police reports for all of this, why are they doing nothing to it at the very least invest investigate? Why aren't they answering and saying, Heather, what the fuck, that's fucked up. Yes, we'll help, what, what should we do? What's the plan? Or this is our plan. You know, I need, I need to know what's going on in order to address the situation. So I made this little worksheet for myself. What are my goals? You know, what am I trying to accomplish? It's simple. What are my goals? I want to be back with my children, earning my own income, whether that's by, you know, online retail sales, uh, personal training instruction, uh, or working for a combination of all three. Living in my own home as I was before, online marketing and content sales with my children, raising my new baby, minding my own business. I have no criminal record. I don't use any drugs. What else would I be doing, right? That would be crazy. That would be crazy if like, Xavier's fucking someone under a tarp and it's beside the tent and Heather's like, all right, I'll just turn the fucking hair dryer on to drown out your guys and I'll go live. That, that would be insane. That'd be, I wouldn't put it past them, but that would just be something. What else would I be doing? What, what steps have I taken to get there? Every fucking step possible, you name it. You name it. 40 to 100 job applications and resumes. My bio is on point. My resume is on point. I have Airbnb reviews for years. Every single host has. Can I see her resume? She must have it posted somewhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to find it for next stream. But uh, he hands out business cards to the model. It's like the Tumblr thing. I remember him getting in trouble, and then she was like, "Why are you mad?" And she's like, um, "Because he's trying to solicit his fucking Tumblr account." So maybe that's the women that he's fucking. He's like, I can make you famous. I'm sent from God. And then they're like, oh, this is a nice Tumblr. And then they just fuck. And then they meet Heather and they're like, I'm out. I'm out. Actually, I, I would assume most of them would be out when they find out Xavier's fucking homeless living with this person. That I'm a fantastic guest. I have letters of recommendation from physicians that I've worked for. Every single one of them says I'm great. Even from a lady whose father I was doing diabetic education and house cleaning for, saying I'm great. Still no responses as far as the job front goes. Still being separated from my children. Going into month six, that I haven't been able to speak or see to or see my youngest child, Alexis. How do you make that make sense? You can't. You're a homeless person living in a tent with a drug addict who is describing insane shit. I just made it made sense, guys. But she don't, she don't like that answer. You can't make that make sense. Not by any moral or legal or ethical code that I'm I'm familiar with. Not by the United States Constitution. Uh, what have I done besides that to, to get closer to my goals? I'm relentless. I, I threw my hands up and I said, nope. Keep doing my photo shoots. I keep on reaching out to possible investors, sponsors. Um, I asked Xavier to reach out to his father. I'm trying to sell uh, Xavier's fine art to real estate agents. But the problem immediately is that I'm having a difficult- Can I see some of the fine art that they're making on the streets of Chicago from the fucking tent that doesn't have walls anymore? I'm sure it's the finest of art. Well, time reaching them. So when I'm in a text box, a text box, I can't send them inquiries, right? I can, but it, it doesn't go through and it doesn't get responded to. In person, people are more likely to respond. Well, what do you have to do to get an in-person deal? I want to ask the real estate agents. I want to hang my husband's art in your properties. I thought she was going to go a lot darker. I want to hang my husband on your properties, but no, the hanging. Okay. What is this business I do? I want you to offer as an incentive for properties that have been on the list, on the listing for over a year that you can't sell 
$10,000 off of list price if you include the artwork. You pay us $5,000 commission for every property that you move for offering the artwork incentive. Do these numbers make sense to you guys? So she's telling the people to sell the place for less, but then also pay her for the art that's going up in there? That doesn't make any sense. Like, wouldn't she tell them to charge more so that they can also pay you? Or else they're just like making way less money. What the fuck? Okay, whatever. I'm not going to get too into it and try to make it make sense. But that, that doesn't make any sense, Heather. This is exclusive artwork. It's highly sought after. Then I go about working on and managing Xavier's career and building him up. You can't even do that for yourself. You're going to do that for Xavier? Xavier, what are you doing? And getting him a reputation as an artist. The same thing I can do with myself and my own art. I mean, I've done hundreds of campaigns. It would make a beautiful coffee table book. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of fashion. There's a lot of statement modeling. I need a coffee table book, I think. Yeah, my coffee table book could use some books. Actually, I have books. I should just start putting some books out on the coffee table. She's inspired me. Political justice social justice issues that I model for. I am valuable. I am an asset to myself and any organization that I voluntarily choose to partner with, to my children, to my family. So what is it going to take to get these peasants the fuck out of my way? What do I mean by peasants? I, I would like to know too, because I would consider you a peasant in this scenario. If we're going back into old timey sayings here. Peasant's not a dollar amount to me. A peasant to me is someone who sees someone else doing something, cannot win against them off of skill or work ethic, so can only win against them by slandering them. That's a really weird definition of peasant. I don't think anyone else has ever used it like that. It's like I said before, if we're both laying bricks to our, to our foundation, you can't stop me from laying bricks. I'm going to keep on laying bricks no matter where I go. I'm going to keep building, building, and building. She's going to keep just taking dumps wherever she goes. I'm laying brick, guys. I right? <laughs> There's a lot of interesting freeze frames in this. Like, this is... This is something. This is, uh, this is alive. You can work on your own foundation, but instead of doing that, you keep coming over to mine and trying to chip away at my bricks that I've just laid down. Why is that? Why is that? No one wants your bricks. You just can't be built putting your bricks on other people's property, is my analogy. Go build your own. And this is what I keep saying to them. So uh, the, the next little question I asked myself in the worksheet was, what was the expected outcome of my effort? Besides calling the state's attorney, the police, filing all these police reports, taking you know ample documentation, um, my expected outcome would be to receive victim services, be placed back in my apartment, uh, and for my lawyer, Nick Albuquerque, to begin working on the hundreds, <laughs> hundreds, of lawsuits that we have. I mean, hundreds, no exaggeration. Hundreds of people involved. Uh, I would be living in my own home, receiving victim services and working on my businesses with my children in my home. Life for me would go back to normal. I'd begin earning my own income again. And that would be that. This problem would be handled in court. And that's it. It's that easy, guys. It's that easy. Val, thank you for, or I think it's Val. Yeah, Val, thank you. For becoming a member, I have to do, I have to do the members only stream this month that I was supposed to do on the first. I'll do it, I'll do it uh, Saturday, which is technically today, on the eleventh instead. Um, I'll schedule that before I go to bed tonight. Period. Seems very simple to me, is it not? And so that was my expected outcome. What has been the real, true outcome? You see, I'm still being held in a tent. I make call after call after call after call. No one's holding her in the tent either. Especially now, they don't even have fucking walls. Just walk out of the tent. I follow up with my healthcare provider um, just so that they can't see, just so there are no loopholes. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I'm pissed off that the situation has not been taken care of, which causes... I'm healthy, happy, and pissed off. I don't think those go together, right? Causal, occasional depression, and I'm capable. But I'm still in a tent, still being prevented from earning my own income, still being limited in contact with my children, 
and still not being communicated with directly from any member of law enforcement, detective agency, advocacy group, or anyone. I just can't believe she's like, I'm happy, angry, and depressed all at the same time. So, like I've said before, my DM is open. What would you do? If you were the one being bludgeoned, stabbed, raped, robbed, and all of your civil, constitutional, and social justice rights were being blatantly ignored, you've already filed every fucking piece of paper that there is to file. You have already created a workaround. Okay, fine. You're not going to give me victim services. You're not going to help me. Fine. Then we're going to start, you know, reappropriating abandoned or vacant lots or buildings that haven't been touched in years. There's a whole list of them. I have a screenshot. I got a screenshot. That's all I need is a fucking screenshot and people are just going to let me do what I want because it's a really good idea. I don't need to buy the building. I don't need to tell anyone how I should go about doing this so it's legal. I'm just going to lay my bricks and you guys cannot stop me. And if you chip away at my bricks, it's unconstitutional <laughs> and I'm going to report you to the FBI probably. I mean, she didn't say that in this one, but she'll call the FBI whenever she feels like it but they just get in my way every single time. So like I said, if you guys are have been listening to everything I've done and not just not just sitting here on the live talking shit, but if you've really been listening and you're a valid contributing member of my community or the society that you live in or even just a compassionate, you know, human who understands the situation, what can what advice can you offer me or anyone in a similar position about how they would find permanent I'm talking the basic minimums of housing, the next step Housing, so shelter, justice, politically and socially, and restitution. What would you do? Tell me in my DM. Hey, I, I, I really would want to know if anyone fucking, <laughs> but you know, what, what I am, um, yeah, I know TD streams. I love TD streams as well, and her videos. She needs to get to. We need to get her to a thousand. If she isn't at a thousand already, I haven't checked her subs in a while. Uh, her and Smitten Kitten, I want them to get to a thousand. Um, so this is where we're gonna put a. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna take the smoke break because I need to um, smoke. <laughs> so give me one second here. I'm gonna get the other one ready because we. How much left is in this one? Um, the show controls all right so there's only what like six minutes left of this but then after this uh i have the eggs video let me just check to see how long the eggs video is too um i'm gonna get al and madison off my screen here so the eggs video is like 21 minutes so i think we'd have like probably about 40 minutes left after the break if like i'm I'm counting commentary. We already went through the uh, screenshot, so that's good. Um, so yeah, let me. What do I need to do here? I'll play the music. Uh, yeah, I'll play the music and I'll get it ready, and then you guys can. Uh, I don't know. Do what you do while I'm doing this. It'll be like a uh, two or three minutes. We'll do. We'll do this one.
All right, there we go. All right. <clears throat> welcome back. You can go anywhere. I'm back. I welcome myself back. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, all right. Let's get back into this. I almost caught it right at the end. I almost caught it, <laughs> but I didn't. So this is, yeah, going back to the stories after the live. And then we're going to go eggs. This is a crazy person. What's up, you guys? Listen and DM your thoughts if they add value. Hold the harassment, please. Oh. Yeah, this is the the video we just watched. Okay, so they're on sale for a dollar at Jewel. I am like not okay. So we're doing a reset. This is where she does the detox that I was worried about. I would slide like if my door was over this way and I could just, you know what I mean? Or else I'd have to slide like way around it won't work so <laughs> so it doesn't i don't know maybe i'll figure it out maybe i'll bust the door <laughs> we're doing um a detox we're having just like non-fast food for the day um carrots and ranch grapes yeah, right, yogurt man. sandwiches <sighs> protein with these hard boiled eggs Dr. Seuss. and we're taking the 10 15 mile walk i think it's 10 miles back to downtown area so look at all this food they have that they could eat but they're gonna go give it away to people who don't need it because they're not supposed to even see them we might step at swedish covenant on and then xavier's like showing her a dr seuss card or something hold on I'm gonna see if he comes back in frame actually. On the way. No, give me one second, I'll put it back. Because I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> this is such a weird look. Like, oh. oh, is it maybe for one of the kids' birthdays? I thought Xavier is just being like a kid. <laughs> He's just like, look at this Dr. Seuss card. Isn't it cool? Can we get it? It's like we don't need a fucking Dr. Seuss card, Xavier. We have your fine art at home, okay? We don't need any more. <laughs> Fucking greeting card. Covenant on the way. These half and half immunity and digestion. I told Xavier we have to do them right now because in case they make us go poo poo. Uh, <laughs> Oak, oh my, my bought. Oak Homelessness Coalition is temporarily, temporarily closed. What I feel, okay, and they keep on sending me in my newsfeed. God got you, and don't worry, and blah blah blah. But uh, I can't help but worry. I'm I'm about to give birth in three months. It's cold. It's getting colder and colder each day in Chicago. We're in November. I have Christmas for my big three kids, uh, and I have no money coming in. You know, or limited money coming in. So I am worried. Uh, I have two pairs of pants left that fit me. Three, if you include the ones that don't really fit, but I wear tall socks to make them fit. Oh, like they're short, I guess. I mean, I don't think they're ever gonna. I thought she was like the pants don't fit because of the pregnancy because she's getting bigger, but it sounds like they're just too short, which means that doesn't really make sense. I've assumed you stopped growing a while ago, at least in height. So why the fuck are those? There, I've never been. I'm thinking too much into it. And uh, I'm tired, you know, I don't know how to be a criminal, and I truly feel like that's working in their benefit. Um, in addition to that, I feel like they're trying to not allow me to go inside so that my choices are either to be outside and freeze or like find an abandoned property or something, you know, to utilize as a temporary living space. And then they arrest me and I can't have my baby anyway. So I really don't know what their plan is, but someone needs to step in. Why are her eyes so like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> are my eyes like that? I don't know. Maybe my eyes are like that. 
And if you thought Xavier was only good at creating fine. This is Xavier's Maraca solo. Are my eyes slitty? <laughs> I'm like tripping on it. Arch, you were wrong. You're in the Maraca solo of your life. Hey, going to. That was pretty good, right, guys? I mean, like, I don't know how you could really do much else with the maracas, but beautiful. Wax my pregnant bush in our tent. <laughs> and I'm going to get some teeth whitening. Um, sounds weird when you say it out loud. Sounds weird, but it's not. It's really uncomfortable to walk around with bush. It's terrible. Uh, in addition to that. So Xavier is going to wax my hairy pregnant bush. As all you can see, I do my own self care. Wait, as you can see, I do my own self care at the moment. And that doesn't make sense because Xavier is doing it. But that's that's their activity for the day. You're going to wax her coochie because it's fucking a jungle. And like, yeah, I got to make sure I don't have gout. I watched... Um, king of the hell where bobby got gout and then i learned what gout was and now i'm like do i have gout every day but probably not <laughs> i haven't been able to take care of myself i don't eat liver so i don't think so Stuff in any way in months it's fucking terrible terrible so we're having a self-care day after we get done walking approximately cheryl doesn't think i have gout i'm good i'm at least 10 miles don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds. Okay, so I just got done um, calling the health plan again regarding the fact that there has been no provider within a five to 10 mile radius of where we primarily stay um, and that I've been Essentially monitoring this pregnancy with the help. Is he watching Grease Lightning again? I can't make out what it is. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Help of doctors on staff at Northwestern's ER, St. Joseph, St. Mary's, First Community, etc., and so forth. Um, I am 26 weeks pregnant. I think I'm closer to 27. I'm going to show you guys a cute little trick that I found out with my previous pregnancies of how... This is how you tell how many weeks along you are using a telephone cord. And I'm assuming they had to have like a measuring tape or something, right? Because this wouldn't make sense any other way. You can figure out how many weeks pregnant you are, okay? So traditionally, when you see an OB gynecologist, every like other week or week, they do several things at your appointment. They do several things. And you're right, BCG. Could have got him his book. I think it was just a greeting card, but it would keep him a little occupied. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, he's his wet magazine. She made him get rid of all his wet magazines. So like he could have been quietly reading. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck this magazine's for, but GQ, you know, living the high life or at least pretending to in a tent. Besides um, listening for fetal heart rate, they also measure your fundal height. Fundal height. I'm going to write that down for you guys. So your fundal height is the measurement of your uterus from your pubic bone to the top of your uterus. And All right, I got to learn this, guys, because I'm not a woman. Here's an interesting fact. It goes up one centimeter every week or approximately one centimeter every week of pregnancy. Isn't that awesome? So your uterus actually grows upward closer to your lungs. And that's why as we near the 40th week of our pregnancy, breathing becomes so much of a chore. And every single week that passes, it's like, oh, God, baby. The baby is literally growing upward into your lungs. So watch. We're going to do it. Okay, so you need a string. We're going to watch her put the baby into her lungs. We're just using a phone charger because we don't have a shoestring and a tape measure. Height okay, tape measure. Is your pubic bone to the top of your uterus. So we're just going to measure like this. Feel when you're pregnant where your uterus where your uterus is starting. And then where it ends.
and then it's supposed to be the exact number of weeks you are along is how many centimeters to measure. So let's measure. Is that right, guys? I don't know what. I don't even know what she's doing. I think she's. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> okay, so this is where we measure from here, the end of the charging cord to here. Stop making sense, the skeleton. Like that'd be too easy, okay? We have to we have to add an extra step bleh, an extra step here. It's important. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Fire. What is that? Nine. Literally nine. Twenty-four. So mine says twenty-four centimeters, and my based on my estimated delivery date, I'm twenty-six weeks, twenty-five days, and twenty-five weeks and six days. So accurate? I think so. It's two weeks off, right? Oh, you guys, good morning. It's Friday. I just got off the phone an hour and a half. Why can't they just turn off the, I call, I'm, I want to call it a vacuum cleaner, the hair dryer. Why can't they turn that off just for the time that they're making the videos? Not all the time. You can live with the fucking hair dryer, but I just don't, I don't want to hear hair dryer in the background of all the every, every video. With my health insurance regarding my pregnancy, um, we are scheduling a self-care day for today and a photo shoot for tonight. Um, this is my end of the second trimester photo shoot. So I haven't really thought much past. Did someone give her the hundred dollars for the photo shoot? I hope not. W wait, what is this? Maybe we can find it. Let's see what we can find out from reading. Uh oh. Well, uh, I think that that's an 855 number. Should be all right. That was a new number. Blocks that, out. but that doesn't show me anything. I don't know what she's trying to show me. That um, wait, <laughs> there's more up here. Thank you to our sponsors for sending a budget. No, someone sent her the hundred. Do you think she's lying? Do you think she's just flexing fake uh, donations? I hope that's the case. If you'd like to contribute, please do so via Cash App. Who the fuck would send her a hundred dollars to go play dress up? outside instead of taking care of real things in life so we're just going to do self-care and then begin curating the photo shoot i hope you guys are having a great friday and start to the weekend um and i'm definitely looking forward to not doing anything like long calls to insurance companies or handling police uh for the next several days I am, Maya. This is what I do. <laughs> this is what I just do YouTube now. Um, and then live. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Oh, God. This is one of her crazy things. Let's see this little ball down here. Blame versus accountability. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to read all this. I read a lot already tonight. All right. I just smoked. I'm not going to read again. Okay. All right. Yeah, I am a Heather channel now. That's, that's what's happening here. <laughs> I saw your text. I forgot to respond. Um, saying that he, she was turning on Xavier. She does that from time to time. They're fine now. He was playing the maracas, and uh, he waxed her bush. Family fun, you know. This is a picture of a tree. I don't know what it is. It's something crazy, though. The family reunion? Wait. The family familian. The family familiar can't read all right this is the end of that now we got hold up i got switched from the sniper wolf setting to uh normal normal youtube setting and i close this stuff i think we i hope we did this no we know okay i did it backwards that's why i was like i hope i didn't miss anything but i didn't um so this is the eggs video. Sure, eggs were stolen. Someone stole her eggs. Oopsies. I got to make this horizontal. Wow, I can see again. <clears throat> Someone stole her eggs, and there's some other clips in here. So this is going to be fun. Uh, I'm excited because I really wanted to know where the fuck these eggs went. So... <laughs>
I was like, I got, we gotta figure it out. I send you guys to go find me something. Someone made a channel. This is a new channel. Um, so if you like this compilation, I haven't watched it yet. This will be fresh for me. This is Stolen Eggs. They got 33 subs. Um, so subscribe, look, we'll subscribe live right now. But bam, look at that. It, it does a little firework there. We'll get all the things turned on. Um, and this is from two days ago. Am I on my? Yeah, I'm on my right account. That's good. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. What else he makes for breakfast? And he won, or that was before I left. Left him on the stove. When I got back in, the eggs were gone from the fucking pot. How? How does that happen? They are going to continue to do this crazy making shit until someone fucking removes them. Or, or um, Dylan, did you clone yourself and steal Heather's eggs while she was at the gym? Her eggs. <laughs> so she thought Dylan was stealing the eggs. Yes. Let's take a walk down memory lane and revisit some of Heather and Xavier's most memorable moments. Hi guys. We're here again. Um what? She gave them to the cups to check for body food. Oh, I think you're joking, but that'd be crazy. I can see her do something crazy. Going through some things. As you all know, last summer, my boss. Look at Xavier. Xavier. <laughs> oh, you know what? We might watch another video after this because I think it was Xavier's chakras did a video being like, um, is Xavier hot? And I, I don't know. You guys got to tell me because I don't. I can't really gauge you guys, but huh? I don't know. Was from outside of it looks very confused all the time. I don't know if that counts for anything. <laughs> I had my laptop, my bags, my clothes, my shoes, my perfumes, my sunglasses, my hats, my shoes. And Why is his nails white? That's not a good sign. Is he dying? Is he just fucking put no, there's no white nail polish? Is there? I mean, there probably is, but what? None of those items have still been replaced yet. So I just want to say again if you're watching and you're the dirty culprit, a naked wardrobe outfit that I had just gotten, please DM me and arrange a time to drop. Why is he like holding her by the neck? That's weird, Xavier. Did you steal the eggs? I don't know. Xavier was around during this time to steal eggs. If it was him, I'm on the case. Though, I want to figure it out. You are a creep. Maybe this is one of the imposter Xaviers. I met Xavier nine months ago. Since meeting Xavier, he says that there hasn't been any sexual assault. We can't really prove that. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because I woke up wearing sweatpants that were brand new and they were ripped off my body. They were still on my body physically, but the whole waistband was ripped apart. I'm talking about this much space while I was sleeping and they were on my body. I asked him. He's here, by the way. You want to have it? I asked him, babe, how would both of us be asleep? And my pants be ripped off my body, and neither one of us wake up. That doesn't seem weird to you. And he said, "Yeah, it does, but I don't think anything happened." Probably because no one was in the tent. Probably because what? I don't know. I don't even know that. Right, what do you mean you don't think anything happened? Well, we didn't wake up. I don't think anything happened. Everyone. Who yeah, I mean. <laughs> I like how Xavier at least has some fucking common sense. Who knows me knows that I cannot stand um, when Xavier is smoking pot outside in the street where people watch. Why? I always tell him the only place he's allowed to smoke pot is inside. You're just like doing your makeup out on the street like a crazy person. Why do you got this leg as a barrier between you and him? Now he's here smoking pot asking ladies for $25. Do you see what I have to deal with? I tell him he has to leave and he refuses. No, I'm recording you. I hate that shit. 
<laughs> why it's, like it's fucking pot i mean like i guess it's illegal on the planes but i don't fucking know cooking with silence thank you for the two off to sleep in town good night steve and company i hope you have a great sleep cooking um close the blind that leads out into the abyss so no one murders you in your sleep you don't want that and i will see you next time we come in this is what we call hater shit. There is no better term. <laughs> He's so out of it. I don't even know, man. Maybe there's a reason Xavier doesn't like being on camera. Literally. Literally a lie. I don't know. I don't know. I can't express. I can't express words right now. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is it's like, did you not believe her? Or like, what, what did that do? Maybe he was trying to read comments with the glasses. Like, why do you look so, he must be high. He's got a lighter or something. That's a lighter, right? He's holding his lighter like a crazy person. I've never seen anyone hold a lighter like that. Oh my god, alive about what? what just okay, so I-, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta save this. I gotta fucking save this. What the fuck is happening, man? Oh man. Anyways, at the end of the day, you guys, this is the situation. Period. If you don't have a fucking solution, shut the fuck up. I don't know what the situation is because Xavier just like looked at us confused as fuck. And then you jumped in and said that. I think you're both really high. Because I am sick and tired. I have been pushed to the ultimate brink. Why is it bobbing up and down too? What do you have your camera resting on? Is it just like hanging from the tent or something? That's what is happening. I don't think that you understand. Your life's gonna last for like five minutes. Um, please stop doing that. The fuck was that? While I'm on a live, you're distracting and ignorant. Can you sit down? Do you hear me talking to you? I'd like you to, yeah, that's great. Sit down next to me. Like a child. Wait, what? Why does he need to sit? I thought they might have been in inside somewhere but there's a big ass building i think yeah there's a building there's a lot of big ass building why does he let him go wander stop being rude and ignorant you can just get that and thank you every time i try to do something serious my partner um starts making jokes like this is not a fucking joke you know what i'm gonna start comparing the way that the gala sisters treat emma like heather treats xavier but it's worse because xavier chooses to be in this crazy situation and emma has no choice you good morning you guys so nothing has really changed or improved at all if anything it's gotten worse in every area um i don't i don't know i literally have been at the point for weeks where i've i've tried running from xavier and he follows me i've called law enforcement and asked them to get him away and they refuse as soon as i'm at my wits end literally with law enforcement there he's like i'm sorry uh, i won't do that anymore and then he proceeds to continue being abusive uh randomly he's so sweet and kind and the regular xavier the one that i met 16 months ago but i really have no idea what the fuck is going on could be drugs i i really have no idea and i don't even have the desire to give a fuck anymore like i don't care just get the fuck away from me and leave me alone is how i feel um his father tricked us into coming literally um someone pooped into xavier's chancla i think it was her so that's lovely xavier and i when we were living with his father in the gold coast we were oh this is a this is a crazy one where she goes on about like the billboards are targeting her for marriage i don't know well i'll we'll let it play I told that that was going to be our apartment okay but that was going to be for us and the kids eight or nine hours pass that xavier is having sex with me and i am completely out of it out of it 
halfway conscious, opening my eyes and then falling back asleep. He remembers it. I remember it. He says it was just him. I think there were more people than just him. He says it was what, Why? Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, I do remember that live BCG. That was some fucking... <laughs> I loved that shit. I think we played it. Maybe it was the bonus stream. I can't remember. But I was just like, I love this right now. I've never seen Xavier like that. He cut off the Wi-Fi, I think. It was fucking beautiful. It was just him. I end up pregnant after that. So, with twins. So, the pregnancy was confirmed by Rush, by Delnor, by Northwestern, by my private physician. I had numerous ultrasounds. Three days before Christmas, Xavier, and again, I'm telling you, it was not Xavier. Xavier doesn't treat me like this. Scratches the fuck out of my cervix with his fingernail in the middle of the night. I wake up in the night screaming and crying. We were at MD Bulls uh, Airbnb. This was the uh, the induced labor self-abortion that was yeah that's just something uh, i've literally so his father tricked us yesterday we were halfway to my doctor's appointment yeah i wanted to know how the dad tricked them that the other one ended let's you gotta just gotta go to it here let's see he said that he would give us the 40 dollars um that he promised xavier he was supposed to be giving me back her xavier i've never spoken directly with him half of the money that i used to cover all of our airbnb costs this entire time um, before my account was nefariously blocked by some unknown assailant. You got tech boxed. Unknown assailant. I guess we just not use tech box at this point. Airbnb customer service has been contacted 30 to 50 times, no less, and never has any information. They say that they'll send me an email and never do. Um, I've always paid cash for every single one of my Airbnbs. I have all of uh, my debit card transactions and everything to prove it. And I have nothing but positive reviews. I'm 20 weeks pregnant. We have a doctor's appointment in Elmwood Park. His father tells us to come back and pick up money. We walk all the way back to the lake downtown and his father stops answering the phone. Xavier, why are you talking to them? Thing that I can do to stop this person from being abusive to me. And I don't know what the fuck is going on with just this cheek. Anyone care to explain? I don't know. I, this is what she thought the filters, they were like messing with the filters or something. This is crazy. This is crazy. Poor Xavier, though. I want to see more Rebel Xavier. Did that ever? Did they ever do that? More? Did they ever do that? Did they ever put Xavier into a position where he actually had some balls and stuck up for himself? This is the type of shit he does. Like the car is there; it's not touching, but he does shit to create the illusion that we are doing something wrong or there could be a chance. I don't need the drama at all. As I said a million times, I take this walk at least once a month to go bring my children snacks and check on them, try to get a hug. Sometimes we hang out at the park. Um, and this is new since not having a vehicle. And I had a vehicle, my own vehicle that I paid for. This is such a chaotic fucking rant because she was mad about the car parking too close to her shit. So instead of her just moving her shit, she like was complaining about that. And then she went on about the fucking kids and then the, the cheek. And I think she goes off onto another fucking thing. Myself, a Cadillac CTS. Yeah, the car. Um, that then to the fucking car. I've had that I got paid off and had for 30 days following the last payment. Then someone mechanically destroyed it. I don't have these blemishes on my face. They're editing again. <laughs> They're editing again. Um, and after they destroyed my Cadillac, Eric Scholl gave me a Honda Civic two-door that was stolen out of the parking lot of my apartment at Montclair at 3 or 4 in the morning. Someone texted me from a number they claimed to be Eric's. I don't think it was Eric's. It's not the number I had saved for Eric. It was a new number, a Google Voice number, and they said that they were taking the car for tires and would bring it back in a few hours, and I never heard from Eric again or got the car back. So ever since then, I've been walking with this cart or all my bags in my arms um, back and forth. I didn't have a tent when all this started because I was sleeping in Airbnb, not outside. Um, and, you know, it's just enough is enough. Like, stop with the fucking game playing. I don't want to play. None of this is relevant to real life. Walking so close to people's vehicles that you make them think you're scratching them or fucking them up and doing other... In no one did that to you, though. You are <laughs> you don't have a vehicle to worry about that. Like... I think she forgot that she was trying to claim that she was being framed 
for touching the vehicle. I don't know. Instigating antagonistic shit is not my style. It's not my jam. I don't want it around me. I've now asked no less than a hundred times for this person to create space and they refuse. The person who is exactly loves the baby and wants a good future and dresses in clean clothing and has manners, he's more than welcome to stay. But this other version that sneaks off and leaves me asleep on the corner of Wabash. While he goes and does fentanyl. To go do fentanyl or that, you know, screams out loud, you're going to get paid back for this when I'm just standing there doing nothing. Or that tells me, stop showing your ass to men when I'm literally just standing like this, doing nothing in public, making me so embarrassed and humiliated when I've already gotten past all of my content sales and the things that I've done. But she didn't do any sexy work, remember? No sexy work, but content sales. To disrespect myself in the past. I don't need four years later to be followed around by my husband and talk shit to. There's a little feature on social media that says comments disabled. Oh yeah, and then it turns into the comments being disabled. This this was just all over the place. She must have been fucking high. So that anyone who wishes you anything other than well can fuck off. My DM stays open for people who do care. And the comments are disabled. It's as simple as that. Stop making it more fucking complicated than it needs to be. You guys. All over the fucking place, dude. All over the place. What did that have to do with the car or anything? And Xavier and uh, the edited blemishes. And... I don't know. Look at Xavier eating this chuleta like a straight savage. <laughs> He's eating what? I thought she said tuna. But that's not tuna. <laughs> Yesterday was a horrible day. They were targeting Xavier again. We were literally in a wrestle, like in the middle of Lincoln Park. It was awful. You're in a wrestle? You're wrestling? Um, what do I mean by they're targeting? They have been literally, Xavier calls it radiation, but they like interfere with his thoughts and like they interfere with Xavier's fucking thoughts. Do crazy making behaviors to him. Like for instance, he'll set something down in his usual place someone will move it and someone is it you and then like pretend like they have no idea you know and, or disappear completely like there was no one else there in the room those are just two examples of the intense amounts of crazy making behavior that they always engage in with him crazy making behavior that they always engage in with him so, you can make xavier teleport and they move his things around to accomplish. And it turns him into a complete and total savage. Oh, okay. So like when he was eating that fucking piece of meat, it's bad. It's bad to be savage. Okay. So I try to just give him space whenever it happens, but like it's been really fucked up lately. Um, we were in a wrestle once and the time before I literally had to like keep his arms down to prevent him from like hitting me. Last video is why you're single. So you guys, as per usual, I'm walking down the street leaving narratives in people's car door handles or under their windshields. And I look back and I see that Xavier. Oh, this is one of my favorite clips, actually. Um, Xavier is just like, throwing the narrative down. He's like not putting in the car handles. And she's just not having it. She's like, this is a saboteur. Has removed the narrative from the cardboard handle and thrown it on the ground. I asked him to pick it up and play dumb. Like, I didn't see him do it. And asked him to put it in the windshield. He picks it up, pretends like he does, but really throws it on the ground again. I walk back there and look, and there it is, sure enough, on the ground. So, husband, stalker, creep, brother of the district attorney, sabotage. Which one? All of them, apparently. And what do you do when you ask a person to act right or get away and they refuse both options? But then we're at the laundromat and this 80 year old man is trying to help me get a job. He's like inquiring about our situation, can clearly see that we're homeless and have all of our stuff. I have been passing out flyers everywhere for four years. My Why does it say anyone else stuck in a hypocritical situation? What about this is hypocritical? You maybe say it's ironic. Are you a hypocrite for being homeless or something? What What does that mean? 
My first year of dealing with this, I made a business card with a direct link to my blog where I have everything written and passed out a thousand copies all around. Xavier followed that old man to Aldi out of the laundromat and threatened him for giving me contact information for a job. But he thinks that it's acceptable to go talk to these women who are literally overtly selling different services. Is that who he's bringing back to the tent to fuck beside you? It's not okay. It's not okay at all. Separate from me or act how you expect me to act. After us being left in the woods again, who just put his hands on... Oh, this is a crazy one. This is the one I seen, I think, the last stream where I was like, Xavier's getting in a fight. This guy's gonna kill Xavier. I wonder if there's gonna be more more context in this clip. Me, as well as Xavier, and kicked me and pushed me and seems to be, I don't know. Look, there's Xavier. He's gonna get, they're gonna fight. Leave him the fuck alone, you piece of shit. Clearly, Xavier doesn't want, is, is trying to walk away from him. Xavier, you wouldn't be in this situation if it weren't for... What is this in the background? Is that a fire truck? What is that? Dude, you're a little bitch, bro. He's like salivating. I'm sure that's going to defuse the situation. Getting at the mouth. Should I stab him? I don't... I, I, I'd say no. Would I be within my rights? According to you, no, because you, if you stab people, they should get like, I don't know, a bunch of restitution from you. And you shouldn't be homeless. You got to put them up in a place and everything. So no, by your own logic, you probably shouldn't be stabbing people. Hold on. Seems like they're having a friendly conversation. <laughs> Xavier, get out of there, Xavier. This is the car he's driving. All right. Oh, no. I really want to know what the end of that was. Poor Xavier. We got to save him. We got to start GoFundMe to save Xavier. So I've been trying to get Xavier to get rid of all this bullshit he carries. He literally has like four backpacks filled with wet magazines. Yeah, so what magazines I was talking about earlier that he could have been quietly reading in the corner instead of listening to fucking Grease Lightning and... I don't know. I don't know what that other shit was. And all I have is that red one with my clothes and our blankets, the Trader Joe's with my novel, the Nike with all the rest of my clothes and my yoga mat, my makeup, and more of our blankets. So more than half of what I have is our blankets and tent. His is just a shit ton of trash. <laughs> all of Xavier's possessions that he's managed to bring this far in life trash what was fine art um and i said we get a reward once it's done i wonder what the reward was do you think the reward was sex guys i think the reward was probably sex so this card is going in the garbage that's what we have to throw away so far and we're only going to be with one cart where do you think they put it in the garbage i think they just fucking left it there can you stop leaving things like this near me for the fourth time today alone? You need to be better in control of yourself. Xavier is loose as fuck. He might need some reminding on how to act. Um, I'm, I'm very into my art, but I'm also not into people using drugs around me in a way that makes me feel uncomfortable. So I don't I only like people doing drugs in the way that makes me feel comfortable. What way is that exactly? How is he doing the drugs that are uncomfortable? I care if you use drugs or what drugs you really use if you're if you're contributing, but don't put that shit around me or don't have it near me. Definitely don't make a bunch of drug garbage and leave it all near me. Like who does that? You know? And if Oh, they framed you? They framed you for doing drugs? Is that it? You weren't doing the drugs, Heather? Are you sure about that? If I've already had to ask you that shit one time, it should never get to four. Just like peeling off. I know it's a face mask, but it just looks like she's ripping her skin off. And it didn't doesn't look like it made her look much 
younger? I don't know. Is that what face mask is supposed to do? Four times. That's the fourth time today I've had to ask. Hi, guys. Okay, so we're awake. Um, we've been up all day, but we had no Wi-Fi and no electricity at this location. Um, I miss my kids. I don't know what to do. Same shit, different fucking day. Uh, again, all of this is unlawful. All of this is unconstitutional. I am now 25 weeks pregnant with baby number four. And I this was the, the Steve DeLive cosplay, I called it. <laughs> I need to see a doctor and I am being prevented from doing so. And they're using Xavier's eyes to create disgusting fucking content of horse and sell it. Thank you, AI. Wow. How is that even possible? They're using Xavier's eyes to make content of horrors and sell it? You guys, so we made it here to a quick star. Um, if anyone wants to do us a huge favor and sponsor Xavier's shower. Because we've been like just soaking him in tea tree oil. And you guys are homeless walking to California. So it's really bad. He needs a shower. He really needs a shower. I gave him a deep oil treatment with tea tree on his luxurious Tarzan locks earlier today. It's $16. He just looks lost. If you would like to send it via Cash App, I will post the uh, info on the next screen. And you are the MVP. And the, the fucking eyelashes through the sunglasses filter. Please stop playing this Girl, music. No. I've now asked six times just since we started the live stream. This is not good for me. What is he doing? Is he playing the bongos or something? I think I hear bongos. Put your headphones on or turn it off. I like music that has rhythm and beat and soul. This fucking music is awful. What the What's wrong with this music? Fuck is that? Don't see the fucking password. I know you know what it is. Oh, this is the one where they're using accents, and I think he's like, you want to do some drugs off camera? And she's like, I only do green, all right? I have no idea what a green response password is, and I've never even cared enough to try the job. <laughs> hold on, hold on, we didn't get, I didn't catch that. Alright, we gotta, we gotta really, oh wait, can I do frame by frame? I don't know how to do the frames on YouTube. There we go, there we go, there's Xavier, look at him. Is he missing a front tooth? I don't know that. Xavier? Scary. What are we watching? What is this? Why is this? <laughs> I'm just, I'm so confused. Why? Why did they make this? Xavier, can you be respectful, please? I'd like to have one recorded document that's not you in the background smoking weed and fucking making noise out of plastic bags. Is that a- Yeah, she got mad at him for smoking weed too loud and I guess doing the helium. Acceptable. I don't, I can't edit this shit on my own. They're clearly blocking me from going live. It's difficult for me to upload these things as it is. Can I have one video that you are not creating a disturbance in the background? Please. Or Xavier he just wants to smoke his weed. <laughs> Why is Xavier in like tights? What is what is he just wearing Heather's clothes? Mm -hmm. 
Why? Just why? That's not a look. Go savage. Uh, police, a man and a woman. So the policeman held me back and said if I if I touched him that he would get me on uh, putting hands on a police officer. Why is he talking in the accent? Get me on. Is that just how we? T I never really hear Xavier talk too much. I think he's putting on an accent. This is weird. So he said that, like, if um, an officer's going to come back, if he touches her, then he's going to get charged with putting hands on a police officer. I think that's what he said. Well, to see your pregnant wife getting thrown to the ground by one person. Well, it's definitely, it's definitely an assault case. And, uh, gonna go after this officer and are we going after the, the oh they're going after the police officer okay i'm an officer too or just a guy i don't really want to go after any individual officer i just want them to give me money for beating the fuck out of me and then not be in a position to do that to anyone else you know that means it's, they never have to it's an assault case and it's it's an internal affairs case and can we talk about what love Church. I don't know what that rope was either. Thehill.com. You gotta start look, looking at some news. <laughs> Just commentary in the back be like, yo, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. And she's like, I'm just trying to do my fucking mega video, bro. I don't trust Washington Post. There's no one more bullshit than Jeff Bezos. Be there. Oh, yeah, look at this one. Where are we? I don't know. Where are you? Tenement Square. Chinatown. His expressions from like I don't know. I make sure that he eats and he makes sure that I eat. Everything we get, we share. So can you please stop smoking pot and flicking the fucking Vic while I'm She's gonna be like, I'm making this video for court. Making a video that I'd like them to play in court. Please. It's like you're a 39 year old man. Sometimes you show up. And you're there, and you know how to communicate, you're respectful. Other times, you're a fucking sabotage, like this. What changes from day to day? Are you using drugs? Is someone standing on your neck? Okay, so Xavier's being extorted or manipulated, in other words. He says, yeah, by the way. He's like, someone's standing on your neck? He's like, yeah. He's like, ah, she's being extorted, but it's her. It's her. Um, I wonder too, though, Mud Pit, how many pairs of glasses she has because she said before, it's like all of my stuff is our stuff. I never see Xavier wearing any of these glasses. He is not being permitted to be sober and honest. Someone has, and that's the kill team I always tell you guys about, some sort of stock in sabotaging me. The fucking kill team, bro. Probably because there are so many fucking lawsuits on the table right now that people are desperate to discredit me. So that is uh, the new channel, the Stolen Eggs channel. Um, I don't know if they have anything else in there. We're almost at 2 in the morning. I'm just going to see. Uh, nefarious, doing the Montclair Apartments. Memorable moment. Okay, so it's got a few videos. So if you guys want to check them out, you can um, curate something new. What's this? I mean, that's only two minutes. We could watch this one. I want to see. I mean, if I do that, it's going to be. Yeah, I got to wrap this up. Let's just do this with that and then we'll call it a night. We'll call it a night here. Like glasses, too. Flick big, smoke bloods, smoke I can't read, smoke drugs, flee the state. They'll never flee the state. They'll never leave Chicago. 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 You'd think. You would think. But no. It's loading. 
loading. Da 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 Maybe we'll have to just wrap it up here because my computer wants to not. It's a two minute video. It's a three minute video. Jeez, love. What else makes for breakfast? Mama mia. Mama mia. Cindy, one, or that was before I left, left them on the stove. When I got back in, the eggs were gone from the fucking pot. They are going to continue to do this crazy making shit until someone fucking removes them. Or, um... Dylan, did you clone yourself and steal Heather's eggs while she was at the gym? Her eggs? Yes. Yeah, I remember. ¿Qué tenemos, DJ? Rápidamente. Que comience la fiesta. Mesa, mesa, mesa que más aplaude. All right. If it's copyright music, I don't know. We might have already hit some copyright music this stream. So I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. And I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back tomorrow. Probably for something. Um, but I'll also be back next Friday for more Heather stuff. Um, so I hope you guys have a great night. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.